Welcome Whoa. back, everybody. Hey. Where can I get ringworm? <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to that. Okay. Once in his presence, shall I avert my eyes? Clark Bark's friend, if I remember. I am Clark <laughs> Oh. Sorry, I know I'm dumping on you right now. It's, it's fine, I got 30 <laughs> minutes of dumping. I'm ready. <laughs> Squeeze tight. And he takes the bandage. <laughs> well done, TC. Wraps around it. One, <laughs> two, three, <laughs> four, five. Welcome back, everybody. Hey. Welcome back to Brunk Hollow and Tabletop Notch presenting thus. I did that in order. <laughs> <laughs> I could have said presented by Tabletop Notch. It would have made way more sense. Uh, Off to a great start. Um, thank you all for joining us as always on this wonderful Sunday evening. We're going to be diving into chapter 18 of Brunk Hollow tonight. Um, Coming of age, baby. Something happened at the end of last stream. We'll be picking that up, presumably, or you know, we don't have to. If we come around to it, we don't, if, you're, yeah. if you're not busy, yeah. <laughs> we don't start with that. I swear. To God. <laughs> um, but before we dive into the campaign proper, as always, thank you for joining us on Sundays <laughs> on Twitch. It's it's a lovely place to hang out and use a Twitch Prime sub if you've got one. Uh, that's fun and easy to do. Uh, oh, we just got raided. Oh, Ricarius, oh. uh, welcome. Thank welcome. you. Oh my gosh, we are just. If you just started. missed it, we're just getting started with chapter eighteen. We left off on quite the hanging of cliff last mm. week. <laughs> uh, there's tons of ways to watch us and listen to us, though. Uh, podcast goes live on Tuesdays. YouTube video goes live on Fridays. Unless you're a supporter in several different ways, which there are lots of great ways to support us, which I can go into. Shall I go into them? <laughs> <laughs> is that your job? Maybe. I saw the list you one of the made. One of the ways you can support us is on Patreon. Mm, yes. I actually just did like a whole update, Armand Dude, who like re-updated our Discord. I was like all in the mood for it, so I I did a lot of wow. <laughs> um, updates and like uh, stuff for the Patreon. So there's three tiers, all of which get early access to our videos. Mm. Um, and we just dropped. Yes, monthly we do <laughs> a. Um, we could go. About this last episode. No, well, oh, we no. advanced. We said it in advance. It, we had oh, it had okay, not dropped. Great, perfect. Every month we, we drop <laughs> some homebrew content that uh, hopefully helpful things that you can drop into your game. I'm gonna bring it actually up on this because it's easier to see oh. on the stream. Um, but this month's um, bless you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this month's content is bring this up, Enduring Injuries. Uh, for those of you intimately familiar with the DMG, which who isn't, there is a section in it called uh, Lingering Injuries, which goes into, you know, particularly brutal injuries that may last longer than just, you know, a quick douse of a healing potion. But uh, we wanted to kind of expand upon that. So if you have kind of a grittier campaign like ours that might have some lingering effects of, of particularly troublesome fights, um, it goes over how to implement them, but then also injuries of all different kinds, mm. leg injuries, arm injuries, neck injuries, back injuries. Eye socket injuries. <laughs> Eye so oh, orbital oh, blowout like fractures. <laughs> um, yeah. Information on the effects that they have and uh, how how one heals the wounds. Um, so it, it, a fun little thing to add if you want to have kind of a, a grittier, more survival-based campaign. Pretty so fun. That was this Ooh. month's drop. Yeah, Very so go cool. ahead and check out the new and updated Patreon. There's like a new video, like walking you through all of the um, possible tiers and all that stuff. We got collections now. It's great. Ooh. Wow. That's crazy. That's, that cool. is wow. pretty spicy. Another great way to support the show for free is by following us on social media, platforms on which we are on all of them, be that Instagram, <laughs> threads, uh, TikTok, um, <laughs> give us attention. We really like that. Mm -hmm. um, the more attention, the better. Um, it feeds our soul. The other thing you might want to do is buy some merch. We got tons of merch. Uh, it's so fun. You can go to my Shopify slash dot com slash tabletop notch. There's, that one. There's a lot of slides. And it'll be in there. Don't you'll find it. Um, and we got some merch right here. We got Ooh. merch right there. We also have merch from the prior campaign, which is so cute. Um, so get in there. Get some merch. 
Tell your friends. Got your merch yeah. right. Another place you should get into is the Discord. Um, the mm. Discord get it, get in there good. is a great place to be. It's um, discord.gg forward slash tabletop notch. I practiced that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I did not practice. The best, <laughs> the best thing that has come from the Discord this week, I have to say, is the Let's Go West poster that just came out <laughs> oh, from the last oh, episode God. discussion. Oh, 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 Ooh, it was so funny. Yeah. But if you're interested in fan art, in talking homebrews uh, with other fellow D&D players, uh, uh, just talking in general in the general chat, for episode discussions. It's, we've got it all. So join. It is a blast. Let's it's go great. Chat. Um, uh, YouTube membership ha- is a new, pretty new thing that uh, uh, has been awesome. Uh, uh, join us there because that that gets you the early access. That gets you the notch and sodas that happen every four chapters of Bronk Hollow. Um, and you can also be a Spotify subscriber, yes. and you'll get the notch and sodas too yes. uh, yeah. in audio form. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, do the poll. Go do the polls there. Oh like God. our stuff. So subscribe, please. Tell your friends. I can't wait for the results of last week's poll. Oh my God. <laughs> you did. <it, it, laughs> I roll. <laughs> Sorry. No. Um, there's a lot of people to thank because everybody's being incredible. So I'm gonna do that really, really fast yeah, here. Please. They're nervous yeah. about Anthony. Yeah, yeah, and you should be apparently. <laughs> apparently He's been hyperventilating for the last half hour. Cheeto made five hour. subscribe with time. Nerf Master <laughs> resubscribe. Mr. Richard Clock resubscribe. Shrewd Ward CS cheered a bit. Thank you. Para subscribe with Prime. Golden Dagger 510 bits. RJ True resubscribed. House of Black uh, 15 bits. Helljack with a thousand bits. RJ True one bit. J Brownie a thousand bits. Uh, Squee with a three stream streak. Mad Rags 90. One resubscribed. Wizard Knight gave out five community subs. Doofenshmirtz Booty Cheeks gave out ten community subs. Favorite Alec username. Five hundred bits. Doofenshmirtz gave out ten more community subs. Whoa. Russell Ogren res- resubscribed. Twitchy Spark th- six, 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 sixty-three bits. Pokedoko resubscribed. That random Twitch guy resubscribed. Mark Faster gave out five oh community gosh. subs. Twitch Sparky did thirty-two bits. Ricari is rated. Woo! We said that. Going forever. Five streams. Tree, chip, 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 five streams. Yep. Streak. Grgx. Grxg gave out five community subs. You have powers. One hundred community subs. Oh CW mile hundred bits. Or sorry, not hundred community subs. Hundred oh, bits. Geez. And then CW mile hundred. It's a GRGX uh, wow. resubscribe, Codeman subscribed, and then Helljack gave out 20 community subs. And then wow. Thank, thank one you. Subscribed. Thank, thank you. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. 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 That is amazing. Much appreciated. Thank you, guys. Very, very, very sweet. Hell thank yeah. you. Uh, cheers to you all. And very appropriately, I've been extremely inconsistent about when I do this. There is an inspiration oh, from last week, but the reason I'm doing it now is because it's drink related. Oh my gosh. The achievement is called The Dude Imbibes, and it is <laughs> out drink your companions at the first mealtime get together with the entire party. We went back and checked to see who <gasps> drank the most fake shots. It has to be dear. And it is indeed more. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well done. She was uh, trying to do some damage. Yay! It was close. Doxley and TC both drank quite a bit as well, but, but Morna. That's awesome. Alien was pretty close too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was Morna was drinking to forget. Nope, I hope I didn't deny you because I was the keeper of the. Yay! <laughs> oh, I feel like Yay. I was down in the. Good. Um, okay. Is that everything? We got I everything? I think we have got. I'm sure there's other things we can do and talk about. <laughs> just all. No, no beach. What? Uh, no, beach. <laughs> all right. Time to do our usual thing. We're going to uh, throw it over to the recap. And then after that, we'll roll into the intro. And then we will um, dive into chapter 18. And we'll see where that takes us. Sure. Please be with you. Um. <laughs> Yes, what's this? Like what's this? Are yes. you forgetting something? No, I don't no, think so. I think we're killing it. I'm just stalling for Anthony. No, don't yeah. stall. Don't <laughs> stall. Bless you. Bless you. All right, everybody. Here. Oh, here. We. Uh, oh, I gotta find the recap. There. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Oh my god. Previously, on chapter 17, empty bottles and full plates. Ilian and Doxley dipped back into the mine shaft to retrieve one more trinket before a scout arrived to relieve his fallen comrade. With the group finding shelter in darkness, they managed to avoid being identified, and not wanting to push their luck any further, they took the civil road back to camp. A long day called for some unwinding at the chop house, so drinks and stories were shared in excess before finally returning to their rooms. In the morning, Doxley had to strike a deal with Gujek, who was considering skipping town, and Kate had an unexpected visitor in the form of her mother, who had come to try and convince her to do the same. Elsewhere, Morna paid a visit to the local beekeeper, a man bearing the unfortunate news that Haskell Pips may be locked up at Fort Contrition. 
TC put all his plans on hold when he got a response to his inquiry from the night before, a letter directing him to a house on the hill that bore another prayer-based puzzle. Will Kate have anything new to say to her mom when next they speak? And who was it that had TC jumping through hoops and so scared he might poops his pants? Stick around and find out on chapter 18 of Bronco. Stick around and find it. That's empty. Oh. As you traverse the lawn toward the overhang protecting the forge, Crenshaw sees you coming and he smiles, partly because of his general jovial disposition, but also because it never hurts to see a satisfied customer return for repeat business. He alternates between scratching his scraggly beard and stacking small piles of helmets that are fashioned from leather and iron straps. Protection, you would guess, for miners rather than fighters, based on the kind of shape, but they don't have quite the fitted form of a, of a true soldier's helmet. Judging by the quantity, it's possible that someone has placed a substantial order with him, or perhaps maybe just protective gear for prospectors is simply in such high demand that Crenshaw likes to have a surplus of them in stock. Either way, he's wasted no time getting started this morning. You can see the sweat glistening off his hefty forearms as he organizes his workspace. When you're close enough to comfortably talk, he wipes his hands on a rag, and then he points up to a rack on the wall where an enormous metal maul has been affixed to the wall. It wasn't here the last time you were here. It's way too large for a normal person to wield. Like a person <laughs> of a regular size could not carry this. And he looks upon it with sort of beaming adoration up on the wall. You're a man of many arsenals. Thought you might like to take a gander. I call him the big boy thumper. <laughs> oh, big boy thumper, and that it is. Mm. Too big for us normal folk. Yeah. But I like to think there's someone out there who could swing it. Mm. Ah, the walls they could break with that big boy. And he almost kind of gets lost in his thoughts a little bit, like thinking about the size of the person <laughs> who they'd have to be to be able to wield <laughs> such a weapon. Wow. <sighs> Took me and two others huffing and puffing just to get it up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fine piece of work, if I do say so myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did it take you forever to make something like that? Mm, made it in pieces, and then I put them all together. <laughs> As I made the big, way. then I made the boy, then I made a big boy. Big boy. <laughs> wow. Uh, man. So, what is it I can do for you? How's your blades holding up? Uh, blades are great. Haven't had a chance to use the Yikelwa yet. <clears throat> Very excited about that. Um, everything's great, but as you can see, uh, I've taken a few more claw attacks from a, uh, a, a large lion. Mm, she's um, got a few good dents in her. Yeah, so... Uh, would it still be around 20 gold to get this all repaired, do you think? And Yeah, that's about it. I can bang her around a bit, get her looking good as new. Amazing. And and you're, it's okay to get it all done today? I could do that, I think. You're the best, Crenshaw. Okay, um, I'm gonna... Pretty light on work at the moment. An hour? An hour? Yeah. From now? Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, uh... Doesn't take too much. That's great. So... Of course, what you ought to invest in is... A little bit of mithril flex weave. 
You will have to enlighten me, Crenshaw. Well, it's just a little <laughs> webbed lining on the spots most likely to take a beating. Okay. It ain't free, but it's cheaper than a set of full mithril, that's for sure. Gives the armor a little bit of extra life. May even soften a few blows for you if you're lucky. So, knowing the Crenshaw Thumper prices, hmm. what would this mithril webbing price be? 800. No, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, my, my heart dropped. My heart dropped a little bit. He goes into the pricing a little bit. So adding flex weave costs six, an additional 60% of the armor's sort of accepted value. Mm. So for splint, it would be 120 gold to add the flex weave to it. I'll take it. I have to do it. I have to do flex it. Flex weave plus the repair? Yeah. 140. <laughs> okay. I can, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> All right. All right. Some flex weave. Great. <laughs> There's the armor. Sort of puts it up on a little. He has like a sort of a, a torso mannequin that he drapes the uh, armor over. Sort of, sort of examines the dents. You can see he's seeing which ones might be able to kind of easily pop out, and which ones might he I might have to reset and sort of refasten together. Yeah, no problem. You know, I would usually never hand off something like this to just anyone, but seeing your work. I trust you with my baby, my armor that's kept me through everything. She's in good hands. <laughs> Thank you, Crenshaw. Uh, How's things otherwise? Tired of being called Fleabag yet? Yeah, I mean, I haven't actually talked with too many people, uh, and so Fleabag hasn't come up too much, but the times it has, it's, it's become a tired phrase, I'd say. <laughs> Town ain't a piece of cake, that's for sure. Population keeps growing. We see plenty of people turn around, walk right back out the door. Yeah. Not me though yet. Mm -hmm. Glad me. to hear it. Anyone that comes by gives me business. Good to stay. Thanks, Crenshaw. Uh, okay, well then, an hour. I'll see you then. Well, is the mithril webbing gonna take any extra long? Mm, maybe an extra thirty. Okay, <laughs> hour thirty, and I will be back probably. If not later, <laughs> I'll be back. I'll have it for you. Thank you, Crenshaw. You ever uh, need a day off from your worries? We'll arrange a time to head south in the valley. There's a nice flat bit of land there where I play a little game I like to call Bumper Thumpers. <laughs> it's sort of like croquet, but you gotta hit the ball real far. If I didn't have plans already today, I would say let's go right now. We could even hold off on the armor, but I'll, I'll wait. I'll definitely come back to play some Bumper Thumper. Cheers. All right, see you, Crenshaw, thank you. And he looks like he turns around, he, as he said, he he seems to get right to work on your armor. He didn't seem to have like a number of orders kind of Amazing. built up or anything. Oh, Crenshaw's the best. <laughs> I have no money again. Oh my God. Oh my God. Remember when you told Maeve you couldn't pay her for that? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. We'll, we'll get back to that. That's fine. Where are you headed next before we uh, pivot uh, over? I just want to head probably up toward the graveyard, but past it at the river where it's a little bit more isolated. Okay. Just to yeah. Think before the morning's over. Definitely. We'll come back to that in a moment. Yeah. It's much quieter than you're used to as you get closer to Maeve's home. And it isn't until you're almost knocking on the door that you realize it's because the water wheel isn't turning. Whatever repairs that she might have hoped to have done to the paddles have not come together yet. So for now, you only get that sort of rush of the river without the rotation or the creaking wood that typically accompanies it. You give yourself a moment to settle after being blindsided by your mother's most unwelcome visit. A spoiling of what you thought might be a, a triumphant return home someday. The fact that she'll be rooming in the same hotel as you feels like you're a kid again and not in the carefree, lesser burden of responsibility kind of way, but in the sharing a roof with someone who's watching and judging every move that you make kind of way. Leaving her presence and coming straight to Maeve's feels like a microcosm of your journey thus far, being told what you can't or shouldn't do and then seeking out a place where you're able to. Elders are often wise in counsel and in warning, but something about this feels right to you. You can do something with this here, this research that you're doing with Maeve, something big, something important. And it's that notion that you cling to as you step up to the door. So you're right there at the door to Maeve's. Um, he's gonna like, 
<laughs> stand there for a second, um, take a series of deep breaths, like maybe 10, <laughs> really slow, especially given how quiet it is, like, yeah. like, I, not a fan of the fact that it's really quiet right now. Yeah, I mean, Let's, you passed two or three people in the thoroughfare on your way to Maeve's, because again, we're sort of bouncing back to when the elves woke up. Uh, yeah. rather. Feels like the fact that the water wheel isn't even turning is like an extra slap in the face. Like, we can't <laughs> even get a little white noise, like, to calm my thoughts. Your mom stopped the water wheel. <laughs> yeah, everything is wrong since so she got here. Grinding to a... <sighs> Lowering the heart rate. Um, and then a knock. Knock on the door. Maeve comes to answer the door, and <laughs> when she opens it, it's almost like a bear coming out of hibernation. She somehow looks even thinner <laughs> than usual, and she shields her eyes from the sky, which isn't even particularly bright at the moment. She rubs her sunken eyes, and curiously, she does kind of a quick check over your shoulder, to the left and right, just looking around kind of in all directions here early in the morning. And then she sort of acknowledges you with a nod, and at the same time produces a cigarette from her pocket. She turns around, she walks back inside, and lifts a candlestick that's almost melted down to a nub, and she <laughs> uses that to light the cigarette. She waves you inside, exhaling a stream of blue smoke up toward the ceiling. On her desks in here are open books of several varieties. Some of them with maps, some of them with symbols, some of them with diagrams. One written half in common and the other in something else. Maybe an aid for her translation efforts, perhaps. The pages that she copied from your manuscript have been marked up with additional notes, drawings that she's made with her own hand. And they're laid out in such a way that allows her to see the majority of them without flipping them back and forth. She has them kind of in a big arc. So if she sits in one spot, she could see all of them at the same time. She certainly has not been twiddling her thumbs, but the place reeks of ether and alcohol, which prompts Maeve to push open a pair of windows to just let some air in from the outside. <laughs> she then walks over to kind of a table near the front window. Coffee? <laughs> yes, ma'am. And she springs over. Once again, she doesn't, none of her things match, similar to the alcohol that you drank the night before, where it was sort of in two different flasks. She has a mug for you and a mug for her. They're difference in shape and sizes, possibly acquired at, at different times. I know, it's a bigger mess than when you left it. My brain feels like it's pushing on the outside of my fucking skull. Ain't done that much reading by candlelight since I was a girl back home. Did you sleep at all, Maeve? A little bit. <sighs> It'd be nice to have a native speaker for some of the more complex passages, but I'm confident that I got the gist of it. Before I get into that, you look like you've seen a fucking ghost. Yeah, it wasn't Ramo Klein again, if that's <laughs> what you're asking. It wasn't. It's a long story. I'm happy to be here, though. Sure. Anyway. It's interesting, um, the way they talk about what they call, and she points at kind of one of the arced pages here in front of her, about what they call brisance. It's how they measure the shattering capability of something that explodes. High brisance is good for blowing up rocks and breaking down walls. But things with low brisance are better when it's an object that you want to handle without losing a fucking limb. A black powder's low brisance. That way you can put it into something and not blow your fucking hands off when you're trying to utilize it. Before we get ahead of ourselves, we need the materials that I spoke of earlier. And it, as she's speaking, it is, she's like sipping the coffee, <laughs> taking a drag of the cigarette. Like it's a, li a little bit of mania, but controlled mania. Like it's all part of her sort of plan here as it's all kind of coming together in her head. We need the materials that I spoke of earlier. Now, sulfur I could send for. But if you're better at I am than making friends here, you might find quicker options. Bison's got mines all over the fucking place. And it's a good bet that they might have run across some sulfur deposits, but didn't bother digging them up because of the smaller profits that you make. If you've got an in with Bison and you can keep my name out of it, great. Otherwise, you could track down some independent operators, but might be hit and miss. I'm a little worried about mentioning needing an, an item from him, you know, and, and him getting a little nosy, or word getting back to him that I'm 
making something. Sulfur's used as a pesticide. Some skin creams as well for conditions like ringworm. I'll say I have ringworm. <laughs> Pick one of those when he asks you what it for and put on a good show. <laughs> Bison's a prick, but he can smell out a lie with the best of them. I will really believe that I have ringworm. <laughs> she sort of looks at your practiced lie. It might be better to just go ahead and fucking get it. <laughs> where, oh. where can I get ringworm? <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to that. Okay. <laughs> now, oh. The last thing, and this is the thing I mentioned when you left last night, this saltpeter stuff is tricky. The documents say that the easiest natural source is guano. Bat shit. But you gotta filter it to get what you need, so you need it in quantity. Can't just scrape a little bit. I was talking to a couple clinkers about a month back, and there's this big lake to the southeast of Little Hollow, Clinkertown, almost on the border of the Upwheel. There's a little island at the center of the lake where they said they saw bats coming and going in such number. It looked like a swarm of locusts. Now, it might be a cave on that island that you could scrape the droppings from. Later today, I'll see if I can find someone who might have a more detailed set of directions. All right. And lastly, since you're so fucking keen on learning something other than the interesting shit, I've got these for you. And she slides over of a couple notebooks that look kind of like, uh, but they look like this, like sort of bound stored journals and Pretty. notebooks. <laughs> and she slides them over to you. Introductory alchemy and a book on safe handling practices. Read them, memorize them, because I ain't going to test you on the material, so you'll have to summon some self-motivation. Yes, ma'am. She hands you the two books. Introductory Alchemy 1 oh, and Safety oh. First. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And they're very similar, but I'll read one of them. You can study this textbook in one hour increments to learn basic information about the respect reactive components in the field of alchemy. After studying this book for 14 total hours, oh, geez. you can add your proficiency bonus to any wisdom, nature, oh. or intelligence arcana checks you make to identify alchemical components. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my God. Recall what they're used for or recall which environments they're commonly found. Oh, sick. You can study during short rests as long as you don't engage in other activities during that time. You can't study it for more than two hours in a six hour period because you okay. can't, like, you're trying to memorize it, so you can't cram all that information. And it's the exact same with the other textbook, except this one is a basic information about practicing safety in the field of alchemy. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. So cool. Is it two hours per book? Book? You could theoretically spend four hours, two on one book and two in on the other. In a six hour period. period. <laughs> yes. wow. If you wanted okay. to go crazy <laughs> study. Get in her fucking room for the next half of the day. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited. Uh, but it's a minimum of a one hour block. You can't do like add up 15 minutes here and there. You okay. gotta at least sit down for one hour. Wow. And again, you can do it during a, a short rest. Aww. So if you're ever short resting somewhere, you can. Like, Kate, hey, you should at least it. hydrate in there. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I've got it, I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> Katie's gonna like gingerly take the books like, like their little babies and put them like in her backpack, um, tuck them very nice and softly. If there is one thing that I am good at, it is studying. Good for you. Put it back in the bag. Um, there was also someone who I was thinking of asking for help whether it was to find the saltpeter or something. Um, have you had interactions with Mr. Brinkpot? I know of him. The gnome, right? Yes. Yeah, I don't use him too often. He's mostly a tinkerer of sorts. Um, fools around with magic items, or at least items that people think are magic. But uh, he's not the gnome that I usually go to for things that I need, so I don't know him well. Is there, who was the gnome you usually go to? There's a gnome by the name of Jasper Shybird. J S P R S H Y B I R D, just like it sounds. Now, Jasper is a fucking top tier horticulturalist and best reverse engineer for libations I ever met. He could take a due size drop of any potion that you got and not only tell you what it is, but what likely went into making it. It's a useful trick for when people come looking to me to pawn off some unlabeled bottles that they stole or scavenged. 
I'm not sure that he's going to be useful for what you're looking for, but that's the only gnome that I work with regular. All right. Well, that's good to know. Could be useful in the future once we figure out what all this means. <laughs> once we turn black powder into a potion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Something useful. Anything else? Um, no, I'll, I'll work on, um, work on getting ringworm and, um, and, uh, wait for, for that plan about the bat shit. It sounds like things are going real well. And I'll study these books. All right, off okay. the fucking Okay, bye, bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you, it's man. It's time for me to set all this aside make some fucking money during working hours. Okay, make sure you get some rest, too, though. Thank you. Do you need me to bring you lunch or something? No. Do you need water? I've got coffee. Do you need help with your, your wheel? No. Okay. I'll come back tomorrow. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> back outside. Please. Close the door behind you. <laughs> like, Books in hand, a little, like you just came from the library. <laughs> kind of like mimicking, like mirroring what happened before I went in. Like a few more deep breaths, but like, like once again, just kind of like Sent her back into an even. <laughs> I feel like it's been like this this morning. Yeah. So just kind of like. As you enter back onto the thoroughfare, you give, you like settle for a moment and then you give a quick look around to make sure your mom isn't like walking yeah. around. And feeling a little bit like, okay, books <laughs> in hand, going, trying to avoid my mom. Maybe I'm 17 again. Um, yeah. So <laughs> to avoid going back to the Paramount. Take a um, little stroll. Is it still like, it's still like non elve? Hours. It's getting close. Uh, yeah, it's probably because oh, no. yeah. <laughs> you, you, you took some time to kind of meditate. And Who's around? Your mom and Maeve. Um, yeah. So it's probably like around seven o'clock. So it's getting close to when other species yeah. regularly get up. What, what is Daphne again? That, where is she? Is Daphne a human? Uh, no, she's an elf. She's an elf. <laughs> I'm going to the Merkel. <laughs> Just in, the in direction case. of the Merkel. We're gonna swing over. Where was uh, we'll we'll do the last uh, elf before we check in on the humans. Where was Doxley headed during this time? Um, who is at the counter now? Uh, in oh, Paramount. Paramount? Yeah. It is Clemens. It's Mr. Clemens. Um, I will go speak with Clemens real quick. Great. Uh, you've returned from your run. Sort of went upstairs, got changed again, and now you're sort of coming down. Yeah, uh, just after talking room. with Gujack. Yes. Yeah. You head downstairs. Set the desk. Good morning, Clemens. Good morning. How was your run? Quite refreshing. How's your morning so far? Good. It is uh, peaceful in the morning. Uh, I do prefer the morning shift to the evening one. Yeah, the thoroughfare is a different beast in the mornings. Is there something I can do for you? Yes, actually. Um, my companions and I are going to be away for most of the morning, I would say. And I don't know if you know this, but Gujek and I sort of have a business arrangement. I've been sort of his security when he's receiving company or speaking with business people. I saw you leave the Paramount at one point, but I did not know the details of your arrangement. Um, he may be expecting some guests, but I'm a little concerned about him being, receiving company when I'm not around. So if I give you a couple of names of who he's doing business with and to maybe just not immediately signal to them that he's in until I'm back and I can keep an eye on him. Would you be comfortable with that? You wish for me to d deny the entry of one to a guest? Or simply say that maybe he's out for the morning or something. I don't want to put you in a bad position, but I'm just looking out for the guy, is all. Make a first question check. Oh my god, Doxley. Devious. Okay, persuasion. Mayor Doxley. Where is that? Uh. 11? 11. I will venture to say, in the interest of the man's safety, as I am concerned with all my patrons, I will say that he has not yet woke, or that he is not available. But if they persist, or... I wouldn't like to put myself in the middle of something. Of course, yes. If you feel like you're getting met with any kind of force, please, feel free. If a casual inquiry comes up, I will say that he is not in. I appreciate it, and I can actually just make it much easier for you, and I'll lean in to get a little quieter. If Micah happens to come by to fetch him, or to receive any word or message from him, that's mainly who I would just prefer to be present for. Very well. 
You're a good man. Thank you. Um, I'll shoot him a gold. Sure. For doing that. <laughs> Have a wonderful rest of your morning, sir. You as well. All right. See you later in the day, I suppose. Business to tend to, as you said. Yes, thank good, you. Good luck. Cheers. And I'll leave, That's and out. if it's getting a little later, I'd like to get Samson, or good as gold. Yeah, just good as, as it opens, just to get some heals. Sure. Is, is there, did you want to talk to them, or were you just looking to buy a couple? Just looking to buy healing potions. We can go ahead and do that. <laughs> okay. So. Actually, uh, this is still, this is, they're humans. This is still pre-humans okay. waiting, we can so wait. good as gold probably isn't open yet. Okay. So, hanging out at the Paramount, or are you walking? Where are you headed? I'm hanging out at the Paramount. Okay. Great. Take a moment there. Paramount. No one else to That's bully in town, Doc Sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I do one shady thing. I'm just the shadiest motherfucker. One? <laughs> Great. We're gonna take a little oh. stroll. Where are we going? Over the bridge. Oh my god. <laughs> Along the river a little ways. <laughs> sort of taking in as your companions are. You can see a little bit of signs of towns coming to life, people coming out of their homes, some tired folk loading up carts or getting ready to move into the downwheel to get started in the mines. But it's still early enough that not everybody's kind of out and about yet. Are you looking for a private spot? Um, it doesn't have to be private, but somewhere there's not a lot of traffic if there were to start being traffic. Yeah, I mean, if you go across the West End Bridge and then kind of follow the river either north or south, you probably could, you know, t walk for five or so minutes and be, you know, out of sight. Um, I'll, I won't even go that far. I'll just go like two minutes north from the bridge. <laughs> sure. Cross over the bridge. Takes a little bit of meandering along the river until you're able to locate a spot that seems sort of suitably isolated. At a time of day when so many people are coming and going on the roads, or starting to as traffic's beginning to pick up, finding outdoor privacy without wandering too far beyond the town limits can be a challenge, but you are able to locate somewhere. You let yourself amble and you eventually kind of stop at an area where the bank has a nice kind of gradual pebbly slope down toward the water. By moving a couple steps down the bank a little bit, you can actually kind of crouch down or even sit down on the on the pebbles there, and your head is like just below sort of regular ground level, making it feel very suddenly like it's nothing but you and the river there. Skies above. Even without much assistance from the sun, the water is clear, and a pair of striped perch are kind of dancing through the current there circling down by your feet, just like when you were a kid dangling them off the docks in the Soulscarp Bay. You knew the touch of those waters so well, and these ones you're just, just starting to get used to. Caught somewhere between homesick and sick of home, every day feeling like you're forging upstream and wondering if the time will come when you can just kind of let go. So you're crouched there by the river by yourself. Yeah, it feels like the last couple days have been it's gotta do this, gotta do this, frenzied. So I wanna take a moment and just close my eyes and hear the water and think of home and Paran and then feel a pang of maybe hurt or not sure if that's a place that I'll be really welcomed back into, maybe. And just let that sink in for a little bit. And then I just wanna think about, you know, how different things felt yesterday and then a week ago and then a month and a year and even five years and just let my mind wander about the path that I'm taking and if it's right or wrong or if it even matters. And I think, yeah, I'm just gonna until the town comes awake, really think about all the actions I've taken recently and how it'll impact my future and my past and be come to terms with that it's already happened, so it's time to move forward and just let the hours go by. Time passes. You're in this spot that you're in, there's a nice kind of 
listening to the town come alive rather than watching it come alive. Like you can't see the whole town because you're sort of below the little level of the of the ground there. But you can start to hear wagon wheels turning. You can start to hear small bits of conversation. You can hear thump, thump, boots on the bridge going over the river. Because you went north, you can hear some of the goblins coming to life. That's kind of on the other side of the river. You can hear <laughs> just little <laughs> noises of goblins moving up and down and around. The time goes Good. by. Do the <laughs> Give me a perception check. Okay. It's a seven. Seven. A little more time passes by, continues to wait, and you wait. All right. Take some time to yourself. A gentle click and a sheepish creak from across the room hardly makes for a celebratory confirmation having <clears throat> assembled the correct sequence of bowls on the mantle. And the process feels very much the same as it did back at the mortuary, a little passage opening from which no sounds emerge and bears the presence of no occupant to beckon you forth. What doesn't feel the same is the manner in which you've arrived, invited rather than evaded. <laughs> and because of that, you're confident this time that it won't be some tunnel to nowhere, which is what happened last time. That's just about the only thing that you're feeling confident about at this particular <laughs> moment, however. And with clammy hands clasped together, you try to will yourself to take another step. So you're in the middle of this, again, tiny sort of entrance hall room, over your right shoulder, you can see the hand on the sort of large, high-backed chair of that gnome that's sitting there by the not-burning fireplace. And then if you turn the other direction, past the kitchen, you can see the part where the wall just slightly ajar. TC takes a handful of breaths, just looking at the doorway. And without realizing it, it's taking a few steps backwards. It's distancing himself from the doorway. Almost side by side with the chair now. Sure, you back up enough that you're sort of next to the chair. Am I to be tested? Once in his presence, shall I avert my eyes? Will the wrong gaze or utterance leave me gibbering and catatonic like you? God, I can feel my heart beating in my skull. and just walk slowly towards the opening. Past the door, past the kitchen. There's no knob, it's just flat. It's just yeah. a quick door. Push. And I need everybody to get out of here. Yes! <laughs> no! I'm actually okay. so freaked out right oh now. My God, I'm, I can't, so I'm like really scared. Okay. Have your phone. I will take it. Yeah. Yep. Not gotcha. on do not disturb. It's cute. I gotcha. Okay. It's gonna be okay. Uh, all right. You can't die you when none of us are here, you know? Yeah, okay. I'm sure that that's true. Okay. Gonna miss you. Goodbye. You can keep the monitor on, but you just yep. keep it muted. So. Some part of you expected 
the first room of this house, the one you were just in, to be a kind of red herring, its modesty masking the grandeur of whatever lay deeper within, beyond its tricks and traps, something triumphant. To believe that is to be let down, because as you pass beyond the false wall, you find yourself in an area where emptiness makes up the majority of its contents. The sole exception to its void simplicity is the fact that the floor is completely covered in deep grooves, markings carved into the wood, pictograms and letters belonging to a script that you cannot read. Assuming that you could read it at all, it might not be words. These carvings stretch from wall to wall so that not a single square inch of the boards beneath your feet are unadorned. But other than that, there's no furniture. There's a few cabinets in the corners of the room, no furniture at all in the room. Is this like the largest room in the place, it seems? It's like... about the same size as the one you just came from. Yeah. It just it was cut in half by that sort of yeah. fake, mysterious wall that yeah. just opened up. The whole appearance of the floorboards beneath you, it has the look of some ancient stone tablet etched with hallowed phrases and potent symbolism. Something that would be preserved in a grand church or a distinguished museum. But here, at this humble hour of the morning, it's being stepped on by lowly you in a dismal shack on a cloudy day in Broncholm. In the center of the room, a man lies on his back with his hands folded over his chest, staring up at the ceiling. It's the same man that you spotted across the river as you were standing outside of Maeve's the other day. Dark skin, short cropped gray hair, clean shaven, solidly built with a very stout neck that's nearly as thick as his head. So he's lying, arms crossed, looking up at the ceiling. What do you know of the meeting that took place on the day of your arrival? The meeting, um, there is a statue, a statue that they unearthed. Stupidly, perhaps, I, I don't presume to know. They had a vote whether to bring it up, destroy it, or leave it where it lie. The, vote, the votes were cast and, and they, they, they chose to bring it up. They do not know its nature. Or at least, no one who does has said. It's a bit of silence. Finally, he leans, picks his torso up off the ground, puts his hands down, and he slowly picks himself up off the ground. And as he does so, the spot where he lay, there is a perfect empty outline of where he was lying in the sense that there are no carvings adorned there. So there's like a, almost like a chalk outline that you see at a crime scene. There's a totally blank part that looks like if he lies in this room, he always lies in that exact spot. Like it's a perfect outline of his body. As he gets up, he doesn't look at you. He walks over to the window. Now you can see those south side windows that mm -hmm. look down toward the Bronk Hollow thoroughfare. Mm -hmm. He walks over to the window, sort of puts his hands behind his back and he speaks again. And as he's speaking, it's difficult to tell sometimes whether he's speaking to you or to himself. He's just kind of speaking in general sometimes. Sometimes he seems to be a little introspective. And you listen. All manner of transgressors and villains have attended this meeting of profane minds that their motions may be given merit and not the swift hand of condemnation adds another layer of filth to this well-caked quagmire of shit and sin. Hear, hear. 
the pain of emptiness and loss that I feel pales next to the abject humiliation of seeking the aid of a man so mundane, so menial. But what have I at my disposal save my status, which bears weight now only as insult to emphasize my infirmity. He looks back up toward the ceiling. You send me to war without a sword, to sea without a ship, and I am forced to cling to the flotsam so as not to drown. And now it gets a little quieter. He doesn't turn towards you. He gets a little closer to the window. Almost, he reaches out and he can touch his reflection there in the window. What am I doing here? What am I to see? Have I seen it already and you await my return? To leave now would be to thwart your will, as you instructed my arrival and made no such order for my departure. But is it possible that you have miscalculated your own ability to penetrate the godless malaise of this world? wretched place, and I am left here, spinning naked in the void. Have I the strength to forge through despair, to muster self-appointed purpose? In the days of old, and as he speaks this next part, he doesn't turn to you, but all of a sudden you get the sense that he's speaking to you now, instead of to himself, to the gods, to the ether, something within you. There's, there's no change in body language, but all of a sudden it just seems like, like it's, it's like a focus. gaze. Yeah, the, even though his physical eyes don't turn, it seems all of the energy somehow, somehow <sighs> points in your direction. TC stiffens, straight up. In the days of old, a man who failed to follow instruction in so simple a task would be forced into a show of fealty. Otherwise, he would be cast out and shackled to the earth until the slow decay of time took him. The priest king, Perseus, would break the shins of every man who wished to serve him, so that during the period of their recovery, they could do nothing but kneel and know his power. I'm not going to break your legs, TC. That would not suit my purpose. So gracious. But maybe one. Just to prove to me that you do not make a habit of miscalculation. Please, I, I thought only to, of your, of your station, and that secrecy was of the utmost importance. 
Place your leg up on the windowsill. T.C. T.C. will slowly come closer. The only windowsill is right over by him. Right in front of him, yep. Pick up his thigh. Place his heel on the... Put your heel up there. And the moment the heel of your foot sort of touches it, in an unbelievably quick motion, he comes down with his elbow and you feel the bone (sighs) cracking. And then just like that, he brings the arm back and he goes back into a position. He didn't even look at you the entire time that that happened. And you have a critical leg injury. Oh my God. (laughs) As he literally at the knee sort of dislocates and breaks the top end of the leg there. And as you're sort of writhing there, sort of holding your leg in pain, he continues to just stare out at the Broncolo thoroughfare. I hope, I hope I have proven myself. Am I to understand that the High Reverend of Piran instructed your arrival in this cesspool? Yes. Are you a man who crawls well through the refuse, knows its ins and outs like a rat in the sewers? I will crawl, if needs be. That statue that they found, I want you to get to it before they take it back to town, if that is indeed their intention. Take that jar and that brush. He points to a cabinet in the corner of the room. That was like some of the only furniture in the room is a couple cabinets up on the walls. He points to one in the corner there. He waits after saying, take that jar and that brush. (laughs) Try the weight on that foot for a second, just to (laughs) stifling a yelp. (laughs) And hobbling. Sort of hobble limp over there. You open it up and inside, there is a jar of, it's like a, it almost looks like water at first, but when you pick it up, it's thicker than water. It's like a gel almost. It has like a thick viscosity to it. And there's a little brush inside as well. Spread as much of that jar's contents on the statue as you are able. It is transparent and odorless. So you need only the opportunity to apply it. Anywhere on the statue, base, form. Anywhere you can reach. It will be done. I have carrots, TC. And I have sticks. Whether you come to know one better than the other is entirely within your control. I see. Is there anything else at the moment? There is not. Shall I find you here again when the task is done? Will you know? You will do as I instructed before. You will bring a letter to Izzy 
and send it to Sienna Sorel. You have only just the two legs, TC. Remember that. How shall I address you? I have no name, nor would you be suitable to utter it if I did. Farewell. I look forward to proving myself up to the task. Start limping away. Get to the threshold of the door. He doesn't turn. He's still staring at the window. I'm gonna turn around and really try to take in um, what he's wearing, his stature, his shape. Yeah. The shapes on the floors, if I could ever maybe try to recreate them. Sure, yeah. Like I mean, they're, they, they're not recognizable to you. However, if you take a moment to just kind of look around, I would say you might, at least if you saw them somewhere else, be like, ooh, those look familiar. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. you can't read them. It's not a you, language or a... Not that you can tell, yeah. yeah. And it seems like a mix of like pictures and scrawlings. Like, it could be words. It, like, it's, it means nothing to you that, that you can immediately distinguish. Mm-hmm. Starts to say four different stupid things, but keeps his fucking mouth shut for now. <sighs> Steps out. Before we bring everybody back in, you hand me the card for a second. So TC has suffered a critical leg injury, which yeah. requires some degree of time and healing. Yeah. You can. It has like a level of injury, if you're joining our Patreon, <laughs> critical uh, enduring injuries. Yeah. So you can reduce, and you can cross these off, feel free to write on these. So mm -hmm. to reduce the trauma level, it's called, you can um, use healing potions, reduces it, taking a long rest reduces it, a use, an expenditure of a healer's kit reduces it as well. Oh, I don't have one else. <laughs> um, so those are all good ways to do that. Okay. Um, you, there's a limit to, you can only do one of each type in a 24 hour period. One of each. Yes. Oh, so you okay. could chug so a potion, rest, and healer's kit. Regular reduce... healer's potion. Yes. Healing potion. Okay. All three of those could reduce it by three. And for those of you at home, uh, an injury to the leg, such as a fracture, break, or severe muscle tear that greatly hinders use of the affected limb. Your speed on foot is halved, and you <sighs> must use a cane or crutch to move without hopping or crawling. <laughs> you, you fall prone after using the dash action. Unless a friendly creature within five feet of where you stop steadies you, uses a reaction to steady you. You have disadvantage on strength and dexterity checks made in an attempt to balance. However, after uh, you get down to trauma level five, so just a few more down, it, yeah. it gets reduced to a significant as opposed to a critical. So it's not as bad. I'll give you both of okay. those cards available to you. And oh, I will, uh, while you read that, I'll invite everybody. My God, <laughs> you, I have, my speed is half. Uh, um, uh, um, cool, thanks. <laughs> no problem, man. Yeah. Um, um, and we'll no get... any damage? Um, uh, yeah. And I'll have it with the with the reaction. Um, sure, yeah, you can do that. Um, I, uh, uh, eight I do. down to four. Okay, okay, okay. What you got there, bud? <laughs> <laughs> that looked really scary. Um, eight down to four. Mm-hmm. We just came up with like 19 theories. Yeah, yeah of what was happening. <laughs> As you hobble your way back out into that main like area, the, the door behind you, seemingly without even you doing anything, you can hear it kind of click shut. And as you look around in the open room, you look over to the high-backed chair that the gnome is sitting in, and he's not there. Fuck me. Oh. And immediately there's a little bit of a, a worry, but then you see him. Oh, God. <laughs> but he's gotten up out of the chair, and he's walked over to, like, a very thin cupboard in sort of over by the mantle there. 
and he opens up the mantle, reaches inside, and he takes out a cane. And he walks over to you slowly, kind of shuffling across the floor. Thank you. Goes back over to the chair. Check out the cane. Sturdy. Simple, yeah. Simple. Sturdy, but simple, yep. Yeah. Um, unadorned, just a simple hooked cane. Mm-hmm. Test my weight on it. Pulse. Again, it's not a sunny day, but just the sort of the air and the light is such a stark contrast to the room you were just in. It all kind of hits you at once, and you just sort of stay there at the threshold of the door. Breathe in the air. No longer that kind of stale interior of the place you were just in, and you hear the close of the door behind you. Sort of look to your left. You see all the gnome tents off to your left. To your right, you see the row of houses down to your right. I see the same person on the porch that was there um, when oh, I made give my me a way perception up. check. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> oh. you, you don't see him. He's definitely not. You can see the porch, and he's yeah. not there on the porch, so yeah. you, you don't see where he might have gone off to. He's, he's like just blinking hard. And... ditch or something, some story as to why. I'm gonna go look along the edge of a path, maybe, um, the, the foot, it's footpath up here. Yeah, I mean, you're right along the stubborn bluffs there. It was yeah. like a little rocky sort of incline. Is there maybe like a path side ditch um, somewhere that would be easy to stumble into? Sure, also you could like, Without rolling all the way down the bluffs, yeah. you kind of go off the edge a little bit. Again, it's not like a vertical, it's like a slope. So you could kind of, someone if someone was walking close to the edge, you could easily kind of slip and lose your footing a little bit there. Okay. Um, take a look around and see who, who I can see from that from that edge there. Um, are you looking for one where people can't see you or yeah, people can see you? For a spot where Give me an investigation check. Yeah. Seven. Seven. I mean, Brunk Hollow is waking at this hour, but it, the bluffs are sectioned off a little bit from the rest of town. You could try and be sort of opportunistic and, and pick a picker moment there when you don't seem to see people looking. Yeah, and I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna contr- make a controlled fall off the, off the bluff there. Okay. Uh, give me an acrobatics check. Uh, and this has to be with disadvantage because of the uh, balance-based check, as the card says. Why you got two cards? Balance-based um, um, acrobatics. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that's fine. Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, yeah. great. Oh, You're oh, able yeah. to taking it. Given that you sort of pick your moment, take a nice long time looking up and down, you find the spot where even if you were to fall a little far, you would stop on like a little kind of ledge yeah. almost. Yeah. So you just sort of close your eyes and step off and then kind of tuck a little bit and <laughs> the cane kind of goes up and you <laughs> take a very small amount of damage. You take three bludgeoning damage. Uh, can I use the reaction? It's just a reaction. Is it oh, an attack um, specifically? Um, so I think it's, didn't I just go yeah, yeah, yeah. When an attack. Yeah, this is, that other one was, but this is not an attack. So just four bludgeoning damage. Or is that what I said? Three bludgeoning damage. Three. Give me a perception check as well. Oh my god. Uh, 22. 22. As you pick yourself up from that little ledge there on the bluffs, you grab the cane and you kind of look around. 
You look over to that house where the guy um, was on his front porch watering the flowers. He's now on his back porch and he was watering some planters there on the back and you can see him. <laughs> oh, oh, clumsy. I'm all right. Good day. A little bit of a confused look on his face, but he goes back to his business. And honestly trying to almost obscure the cane a little bit as I'm getting up sure, here. Give me a slight of hand check. Uh, slight of hand, uh, dirty 20. You're great, you keep it behind you as you kind of wave. You wait <laughs> for him to turn back to his plants before you take it back out. And I'm sufficiently scuffed. Yeah, you, you, you're, you have dirt all down one side of your body. There's a couple superficial scrapes, you know, up and down yep. the, your leg and your arm. Yep. Yep. Uh, getting used to the cane here. I'll make my way back to the Paramount. Slowly work your way kind of into that detention pass nook and then back around to the other side. <sighs> A calm atmosphere as Morna. This was, again, sort of switching back and forth in time. You had passed by uh, PC on your way back. And as you swing back around the bluffs and into the main strip here, there's something that just doesn't feel right, which isn't a terribly unusual sensation for you, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. given everything that's kind of going on. But it's not your typical sort of battle from within. It's almost like a mental rut or like a stagnation, like a, like a, like almost like writer's block, but it's not about writing. You've just received what is almost certainly the most promising lead that you've gotten so far regarding the man that you're hunting. A credible tip that puts Haskell in a specific location not far from here. And not only that, it's a location that you have reason to believe he may be stuck at, despite the fact that Shelby hadn't seen him for over a week. Then why is it that you feel so detached right now? Why is the ferocity and the conviction not rising within you? Is it because that you know that walking into Fort Contrition is no simple task? That visitation rights are basically non-existent and that somebody's gonna have to pull some strings to get you the access that you need? Is it because even if you're able to arrange a meeting that you might not be able to do what you came to do in the presence of guards? Or is it something else? Something gnawing at you, something that's been gnawing at you from before you even came to Brunkhall. All of this in your head as you find your way back to the porch of the Paramount. None of your companions currently in sight, but the welcome confines of the kitchen beckon should you wish to find comfort and familiarity. Yeah, she's gonna um, just sort of, with her head swirling with all of these thoughts, a little numb blessing at that point. Um, she's gonna sort of nod to Clemens, good morning, and then go straight back to try to find Kenzo and get some coffee and go through the motions of eating. Great, head into the kitchen area. Were you headed off elsewhere because you would have had the opportunity to leave or have you been kind of sitting and, and having some quiet time in the kitchen here at Paramount? Yeah, I guess I've just been sitting. Okay, so as you move into the kitchen area, you you flag Kenzo in the kitchen who sort of gives you a smile and grabs a little pot of coffee there. But you do see, you didn't see her at first because she'd seated in one of the little booths on the side, but you do see Doxley seated there. Does she see me? Do, are you in your own? Thoughts in the moment? Sure. She does not register you at the moment. Uh, uh, she, she sort of wants to just keep to herself, but um, is is gonna be like, no, no, you have to do the thing and go and um, say hello to just sort of pull on the curtain a little bit and you can hear it just sort of being drawn ever so slightly. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, how are you? Yeah. Ah. Just gonna <laughs> sort of sit in the booth. You've been up for 30 minutes and that's how you're feeling about your day already. Yep. That's how you feel about your day. I suppose you've been up a little longer. It can go up from here. Yeah, I suppose that is one way to look at it. The coffee's good, at least. Almost as if prompted, you can this our shelter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Was Brunk Hollow all you expected it to be? It's what I was hoping it would be, yeah. What about you? I confess I do not know what to make of it. Come on, you're not enjoying it just a little bit, Morna? <laughs> I, I suppose enjoying it is, uh, sure. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> no insight check required. No insight check required. <laughs> she's like, she's, it's really good. I lying. love it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to take a big sip of coffee. Sure. You know, if I were to just take a look at you while you're not doing much, would I see your lips moving and counting down the days that you left? Um, no, there's nothing for me to return to. So I'm here to make a go of it. Sorry if that's depressing for the early morning hour. I suppose, right? I have... well, I've, I've been up for hours. Oh, well, then. Sorry if that's depressing for a normal morning. Yeah. I'm sorry that that's the reality of it. Do you miss home? I miss some parts of it. What parts? I've never been to Iran. Well, the water's something to look at, that's for sure. The music. Sounds of the docks. Miss that. There's some good music here, I would say. Perhaps we'll go to the music box. Oh, that's right, yeah. No, I haven't been yet. They play loudly. I like loud. <laughs> Seemed a little easier back home, but I suppose that's why we all come out here, right? Anything new is a challenge, I suppose. Yeah. Are there people you miss? That's a hard question. Is it? I don't mean it to be. Well, like all those mean people? Did he actually say that to you? <laughs> I'm he actually said those words. I'm afraid he did. <laughs> <laughs> Gave me almost no information <laughs> other than to say it was a collection of mean people. <laughs> Alien is sometimes the smartest person I've ever met in my life, and at other times, proves otherwise. <laughs> my brother was exactly like that. So stupid. And so <laughs> smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, no, I really don't mean to pry. <laughs> I know nothing. But, uh, yes, he did. He did really say that. Have I already asked you if you'd be comfortable telling me his name? My brother? Yeah. Oh, uh, Quinn. It's a nice name. I like that. Yeah. He was a good kid. Um, how long has it been? A couple months. Oh. A month. Morna, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. Perhaps that is my melancholy attitude. Yeah, I'd say that's warranted. Yeah. So no, Broncolo does not appeal to me for a variety of reasons. Perhaps the first and foremost is my... grief. I don't think any place would appeal to me. I don't even think time would appeal to you, honestly. That's not very reassuring. Sorry. Yeah, sorry I said that. Sorry. That's, that was stupid. No, it's all right. A little bit of time goes by. Both of you give me perception checks. As you're <laughs> chatting here. Uh, 15. 15. Nine. No, I'm sorry, 14. Okay. Fitting that you might perceive this, there's a little bit of other quiet conversations happening around the um, around the kitchen here. Not a lot of people, but 
a table of two, a table of three, it might be someone else in the booth kind of just to the left of you. And you hear a little snippet between a few people and as you look over, they look, um, they look dressed in sort of laboring attire, like minor attire, but not dirtied yet. Like they haven't been out to the mines yet, which would make sense. It's still pretty early in the day. And you hear a little bit of, as, as, as there's a natural lull in the conversation with Doxley, you hear some of what they're saying. Looks like that's fucking it for him, huh? It seems that way. It's a shame. I mean, the man was a fucking inebriate, no doubt. But when he was right, he earned with the best of them. Fucking skits, man. His own worst enemy. Quietly back and forth. That's the peace that you get. <laughs> I, excuse me, just one one moment, and I'm gonna excuse myself from the table and sure, you can walk over. Say, we'll get up and stand like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Oh my goodness! Um, There's two men and a, and a woman there, one dwarven, two human, all just kind of sort of sitting around, like drinking coffee, sitting around the little table there. I'm so sorry to... I didn't mean to eavesdrop. Did you say something about Skits? Yeah. You know? I haven't met him. He was the first friendly face I saw in town. Huh. All right. Is he all right? Huh? No. Right over the side. And as he says that, one of the other guys comes forward and he sort of smacks him on the chest. Don't be a fucking asshole. He ain't dead. He's just getting cut loose. One too many times laid on the line. Or absent entirely in a pool of his own sick. Yeah, that too. In any case, he'll be seeking employment elsewhere. Yeah, I'd say he could strike out independent, but the man needs structure. Self-motivation ain't his long suit. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that he's lost his job, but glad to hear he is alive. All right. Sorry. No, it's all right. Cheers. Cheers. Just gonna sit back down. Doctor, will stand again. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Sorry, I thought... No. Anyway. You okay? Yes. I got concerned for a moment. You, have you seen that drunk? You might have to be a little more specific. <laughs> yes, this is Brunkel, after all. Yes, he is. Uh, he is often around the fireplace in the evening. Oh, sure, yeah. Very <laughs> much in his drink. M more than most. I see. Any. Anyway, he was kind, and I thought something had befallen him, and it has, but not in the way I feared. So, not dead then. Not dead then. Yes. He's got one step higher than most people in Brook Hollow, I guess. Her I guess. Graveyard is quite big. I worry without employment, he will soon be dead. But anyway. Well, if you can think of any tasks for him. <laughs> I, shall, I shall think on it. Yes. All right. And with uh, skits in the back of your mind, wondering oh. what, what profession he might be suitable for. Oh, yeah. We head back to the river where, almost even surprising yourself how long you've sort of been almost tranquilly, not meditating, but sort of in a state of loose meditation in the sense that you're just sort of letting the day wash over you. You hear the sounds of Brunk Hollow continuing to come to life. And you can tell that you've been sitting here for a while. It might be time to check in on other people, other parts of town. How long do, would you say? I would say now it's a little past the time when humans would be up, so eight, like 9, 30, 9 o'clock somewhere. Would Crenshaw, like an hour and a half for armor? Was like not um, Probably a little bit longer, because you would have had to wait. Crenshaw's not an elf, so you would, we're mm, theoretically saying you would have had to wait till he had opened up shop, so gotcha. you probably still got another half hour to an hour before he's ready to, maybe a half. All right. Ilian uh, will pick himself up. Brush himself off, feel better, and ready to approach the day and head back to the Paramount. As you turn around and sort of come up that little slope there uh, by the riverbank, you turn and 
Despite not knowing the intricate differences of their shape, size, and appearance, a couple steps away from you is a goblin that you're pretty sure you recognize. Mm. One of the intrepid types that was digging away in the downwheel <laughs> when you were keeping lookout atop the bluffs. If you're not mistaken, he was the one who was rather insistent that you return the bones that you found on the goblin corpse, and perhaps the same one that invited Morna to observe the operation when she went kind of down below. And it looked like, you couldn't be certain, but it looked like he was like creeping closer, and then as you turn around, <laughs> well, 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 I, do I know you? And it seems like it took longer for him to register. He would see, thought he was just sneaking up on someone kind of sitting by the riverbank. I seen you. <laughs> Clark Bark's friend, if I remember. I am Clark Bark. <laughs> oh, you are Clark Bark. You. Tried to take the bomb from Max Lap. That's right, Max Lap. Yes. Uh, what a pleasure it is to run into you today. Um, yeah. Can I help you with anything? No. Okay. We got the bomb back. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's good to hear. Shout the bomb to Sloan Ding. And next time, don't try to take Max Lap's bombs. All right, Clark Bark. Uh, I hope the bone was everything you wanted it to be. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna head back into town. Sign over Crenshaw's. <laughs> I was? Yeah. You know Crenshaw? No, he's... You don't work with him, or no. don't work with him. Okay. Having ourselves some problems. Uh, you the goblins, or you and Crenshaw individually? No, no Crenshaw. <laughs> Another group of goblins fucking up our dig site. Oh. oh. Need to defend ourselves better. Need better weapons. Uh. But we can't buy them in Brunkholm. Can't buy them in Clinket Town. That's what I hear. Um, I'm sorry to hear that that's happening. Um, if you were to get us some weapons, then maybe Sloan Ding could tell you a little more about the bombs. Uh, I don't know if that's my place to get in the way of all the big wigs in town, you know, laying down rules and, and I could be killed for something like that, probably. So just defending ourselves. That's true. Slings and rocks are pretty good too, though. And maybe that can be fashioned and need swords, <laughs> shields. <laughs> Slow thing, I'll tell you about the bones. All right, I'll bite, uh, Clark Bark. If you think that swords are so important, maybe you can give me a little bit of info on why this bone would be important to me in any way at all. You don't have to tell me anything, but maybe no swords will come of that. Make a persu persuasion check. Make a persuasion again. Persuade me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the nine. Nine. Aww. No. <laughs> all right. Well then, maybe I'll do a bit of my own investigation, and you can keep an eye on me. We can have a conversation if I find anything out about the bones. Sound not going to tell you about the bones. Man, I think you're shit out of luck, my friend. I don't think I got swords for you. Fine, fuck you. All right. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Fuck you. <laughs> Skitters off fall on your river. He's gone. Okay. Um, Where do you head to? Uh, all right, I'm going to go back to the Paramount. <laughs> After that like sort of tranquil moment, you wake up and there's like a goblin in your face and immediately sort of on guard. Hey, fuck you. No, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck that guy. <laughs> you start to head back in the direction of Paramount, and that is where we're going to take a break. Oh, okay. oh what is going on? Um, what cult are you in? <laughs> the bad one. What has happened? <laughs> I hurt thee my leg he real hurt bad. His leg oh no. Real bad. Oh, it's significant. Uh, excuse me, critical leg. <laughs> that's oh, the worst that's one. That's the worst one. Yeah. This sucks. That's a lot of <laughs> my movement speed is halved. Yeah, but weren't you just being like, oh, my bonus action? I can do that anyway. Move. <laughs> if I dash, I fall prone. <laughs> That's right. That's embarrassing. That is Shut so embarrassing. <laughs> that's so embarrassing. Unless someone uses a reaction to catch you. 
or they can no. choose not to and just let you <gasps> fall. I'm <laughs> sticking close to Muscle Mommy tonight. Um, Catch me, my hero. I need wow. the. I need to write down how to get these. Yep, we have all that information. I, I'm gonna. I'm going to good as gold first, not to Paramount. Yep. <laughs> I need to go get a healer's kit because that's something that I can use like once or twice a day, right? Uh, once in a 24-hour period for that specific oh. purpose. You can use it multiple times a day. I know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that is where we're going to take a break. Thank you, everybody. Um, got through some of the some of the heft. Wow. And, wow. Uh, How and you now... feeling? Are you happy it's over? <laughs> oh no, it's still scary. Oh my god, Matt, okay. I thought you were gonna kill sl Skids. Off oh my yeah, god. that was naughty. <laughs> I yeah. thought you were gonna off, off screen kill Skids. No. He's he's not a reliable employee is the problem. I'm so. back with him. Uh, <laughs> All right, we've got some games. We've got some Bronk Hollow Powerball. Get, Powerball Get your numbers numbers. ready. Don't go anywhere. Stay. <laughs> Stay and help me. Please. <laughs> Tell me what to do. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you on the other side. See you soon. Goodbye. Tell us everything. Shut up about the girth. Uh, are we live? Notches out of number four. Not yeah. 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 Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. When Maeve said that outside the door of like, Maybe you should use that on someone who's closer to you. In Alien's mind, it was like, like TC? Raven or TC? <gasps> oh. Can you choose? You can't make the choose so between them, my cheese. <laughs> Does everybody have an alignment? Chaotic horny. <laughs> <laughs> don't, we fucking no, don't, know what you don't have. Don't even tell us. Yes, no, don't Shut tell it. us. It's so irritating. Don't tell us. You bring it up every night. I don't even think this is <laughs> like I said. We have a really night. mature group that can handle this. <laughs> what do you think of first? Personality or backstory? Mix of both? Um, if, I would say function in the story first. What's Scary. fun is that you teach the players that sounds mean certain things. Yeah. She begins to sponge his back. This no. is stage direction. Do you have a choice that your character regrets the most so far? All right, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful week. Uh, we'll see you next week. What's going on? Nothing. Hello. Hey, hi. Oh. hey technical. Um, welcome, uh. everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on that rather Delicious. robust it's first half. Yeah, hey, yeah. We still haven't gotten to see it. <laughs> um, we're gonna dive right back in, but before we do so, oh, um, there's a lot of people to thank, guys. Yeah. Oh my god. Probably because. Gosh. You're so sad looking. Yeah, Aww. you look so, so sad. sad. You're such a, I such can't a wait. sad baby. I, this is great. You guys feel bad for me now. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna revel in this because it's not gonna. Yeah, because by the way, we have not seen it. Mm. Ten more subs and I'll break the other leg. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Doku resubscribe. Seth, Seth sixteen ninety resubscribe. Wizard Ank gifted a sub. Chad Arnold resubscribe. Wizard Ank gifted another sub. Captain Cad resubscribe. Newton Drum six resubscribe. Castaway Cactus three stream streak. I stink and I'm a dumb dumb. Gave out five community subs. Golden Dagger uh, did a thousand fifty bits. Wow. Captain Kirk reached five stream streak. Helljack 10 bits, Master Dark 5 Shroom Shroom, wow. Helljack 10 bits, Jordan Blink? Oh, I guess I wasn't blinking. <laughs> Bearsy Poof, 5 community subs, probably Brian, resubscribed, Helljack 10 bits, J Brownie 1000 bits, CW Mile, the community subs, CW Mile 200 bits, Crazy Thadley 10 community subs, Doofenshmirtz 10 community subs, and then Doofenshmirtz. 5 community subs, and then Apothecary did a subscribe with Prime. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank Thank you. So Thank nice. You. Wow. Oh, excuse me. Break the legs more often, Anthony. <laughs> I practice constantly. Yeah. Dream roll. It's not fun to get your legs broken. Well, just the one leg, actually. We're gonna pop on over to the Merc Hall, oh. where um, Kate has wandered over oh. to. Is it open? <laughs> it is, we're, we're sort of pushing forward. You were with Maeve for a little bit of time, so now it's, it's you know, 8.39 or so. The humans are up, people are starting to get moving around. The thoroughfare is getting a little busier. And for the first time upon arriving at the Merc Hall, Daphne is not posted at her usual spot mm. behind the cage. And for a moment, you think that she's not present at all. But then she emerges from that iron banded door in the back left corner. And the last time you saw that door being used, it was being used to usher someone into the holding cells, the goblin that had been apprehended by a bit of a rambunctious mob looking for a reward. 
If you had to guess, Daphne looks a little bit flustered and fatigued, almost like she either had a long night or had a very busy or early morning. And at one point she drops her key ring while she's trying to sort of lock up that door. She sort of drops and she lets out kind of a, fuck, <sighs> reaches down, gets the keys. And as she says that it causes the, you know, eight to 12 people that are sitting, having a bite to eat that are at these sort of tables. Everyone kind of looks over for a moment. It goes back to their business. When she's done turning the key, she moves over to a nearby chair where a knapsack has the top flap open. And it looks like she's packing a few things inside. And she stops occasionally to grab at that spot on her lower back that you seems to always be kind of troubling her as kind of a chronic injury or whatever it is. So she's over there sort of stuffing things into a bag here. It's fairly quiet. There's a little bit of chatter happening from table to table. Does she look like pissed? Uh, give, me she... a, give me a perception. Okay. Just urgent. Um, my new numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a bad roll. Um, 13. 13. Pissed is not the predominant sort of emotion that you get. She seems a little, like I said, like fatigued, almost like she had a very, very long night or a very, very early morning. And a little just sort of overwhelmed is more oh. the sense that you get. That she's like, maybe has a lot of things she's juggling at the moment. Yeah. She's over there. Okay. I'll just walk up. <laughs> okay. You're, you're walking up kind of behind her because she's packing stuff into a bag. Kate okay, doesn't want to be alone right now. Um, <laughs> looking, looking busy. I hope it's something quick, Glory, because I'm a little busy. Anything I can help with while I'm here? You ain't come here yet without something specific on your mind. You come out with it, I'll see if I can help. Nah, it's, it's fine. It's more of a personal matter. Um, but I can see you're busy, so I'll check in later. If you be concise, you got me now. I don't know where I'm gonna be later today. I honestly think it's a much longer conversation and probably one for later at night rather than early in the morning. So I hope you make it back safe. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. Um, how many people are in the Merc Hall? Like, yeah, like a dozen, about a dozen people, like scattered at different tables, yeah. group of three, group of four. <laughs> Ooh, if I'm just like sitting here for an hour, would that be weird? Like, um, some you might get some raised eyebrows because you're not sort of a regular employee of the Merc Hall, at least yeah. not yet. Um, but I don't, no one would be, it wouldn't be grossly suspicious or like uh, you were. Yeah. Well, okay. I don't want, I don't really want people to see me with these books. So I'm going to go, I'm going to just leave. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah back again. I mean, a, a little wanting to talk to someone, but sensing that now is not the time not for the time. Daphne. Yeah, yeah. Back. That's I don't fun. know where anybody else is, and I don't want to run into my mom. Um, so, kind of like frustrated and like back in the thoroughfare. I think that, like, not even with, not even really understanding why, but Kate is going to try and find Ilian. Okay. Um, and just like take a lap around, and and if if I can't find him, just like maybe go to the river, okay. you know. Give me a uh, perception check, and with advantage, because we'll say you're walking kind of up and down the streets. You're kind of looking around, maybe wondering. You have a little bit of time here. You're not in a hurry, so. Terrible! Wow. With advantage. With advantage. Oh, with advantage. Mm -hmm. Also terrible. Is that <laughs> not a D twelve? That's a d12. Oh, shit. Have you been rolling that the whole time? I Sorry, know. I didn't take my dice out of my box today. That's okay. Okay, with advantage, that's good. I haven't rolled above a 12 all night. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said perception? Mm-hmm. 26. 26. <laughs> a little better than a d12. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, a little bit of time goes by as you're kind of moving up and down. You cross back across the bridge. You pass by Maves. And just as you're coming kind of up in the direction of that uh, open market there, you actually see Ilian who's walking back. You were headed back to Paramount, yes? You see Ilian who looks like he's about to walk by, and he, he looks like he's headed for the doors of Paramount, but you could stop him before he gets in there if you wished to. He's going into the Paramount? Yeah, he looks like he's headed there. Okay, I'm gonna like run to catch up to him. You see her out of the corner of your eye. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Out for a jog. Yeah, something like that. Cool. <laughs> How was your morning? <laughs> There's a bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shut up. How was your morning? Uh. Good. <laughs> 
Just checking in. How was your boy? <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, gave my armor to Crenshaw to be worked on, so I'm very excited for shiny new armor. Cool. Yeah. Love that. That's your morning. News. Oh yeah, yeah. I went. Maeve gave me some books. <gasps> wow. What about what? <sighs> Alchemy. Oh. Safety. Wow. Okay. That's <laughs> safety. That's really cool. Congratulations. I'm kind of like, ooh, should I keep, you know, don't want anyone to see me reading them necessarily. I just didn't want to be by myself right now. Oh. About the alchemy. Yeah. Says, can I tell you something? Sure. Will you walk with me away from here? Uh, yeah, I got a, like a half hour until I need to get my armor. That, so. that works for me. Okay. Um, in case you got to take off in the other direction. Okay. Like running? No, like <laughs> <laughs> up. fast walking away from. Sure. The Which direction? I mean, you can go. Um, Just through the main thoroughfare. Sure. West yeah. down. You're heading kind of in the direction of yeah. Crenshaw's. Down. Wherever there's most a crowd of people, yeah. you know, starting to that would up. be it. Yep, for sure. Passing by like the Lucky yeah. Heathen on your right and Bernard's boarding on your left. Uh, and as soon as there's like a lot of people around, They're like on. I'm just gonna kind of like turn around to Alien. <laughs> My mom is here. Wow. That's exciting. Please don't tell anyone, but I just felt like if I didn't tell somebody, I was gonna go crazy. This doesn't seem like a, ha are, this is not a good thing. It's not a good thing, no. Okay. Oh uh, Yeah, I won't tell anyone. It's... I just don't want her to, you know, be, it's weird that she's here anyway. Like, I don't want her to get in danger or anything. Not like I've made enemies, but you know. Is she here for business or for? For her business, she's here to be in my business. I see. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. She won't leave. She won't talk to me like I'm a person. Um, well, and I just don't, I want her to get out of here because this is obviously not a place you want your mom to be. Yeah. Um, William thinks about his mom. <laughs> yeah. Like. Uh, well, did you tell her all that? Did you say, "Hey, I'm good, mom. Go home." Yeah, she's not really in a listening mood. Well, I don't see how that's your issue. Seems more of her issue. You seem like somebody who was raised in a family where you don't talk back to your parents. No, that's not true. Uh, there's a lot of yelling all the time. <laughs> how would you, if your mom showed up here, oh. what would you do? I would run and scream and cry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that's a bit of a complicated question, but as far as your situation, um, I mean, if you're content here and she wants you to go home and you don't want to, sounds like that's the end of the story. I don't see what more there is to do about it, aside maybe your mom's feelings will get hurt, but... Yeah, I think I've already hurt them. Well, she might get over it. Who's even watching my little siblings right now? Like, I don't, how would she get all the way here? She's never, sorry, I know I'm dumping on you right now. It's, it's fine, I got 30 <laughs> minutes of dumping. I'm ready. <laughs> it's a bit of a word of issue. <laughs> I didn't say it. I, I don't know what to do. If you think of any tactics or anything like that to try to get her to get out of here? Well, there could be quite a few things you could do, but I would say the best is honesty is the best policy. You tell her what you want to know and then what you want her to know, and then that's the end of story. Or if you want to be more nefarious, you could plant like rats in a room. You could do like a bunch of stuff like that. It's not She's bad. staying. She's at the Paramount. So yeah, you could plant, ask Clemens where her room is and then plant something in a room and really smoke her out, but that seems a bit more like a nefarious tactic than I'll just... I'll wait at least 24 hours before employing the rats in her bedroom. Yeah. But that's not a bad idea. Well? Do you know where I can get ringworm? <laughs> um, it's like a fungus, right? Uh, it's not an actual worm. I don't have a lot of info on ringworm. Damn. Do you think Doxley would know? Maeve might have a book on it. I was just there. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I don't... Wait, why do you need... Uh, I'm not gonna ask, but... 
I don't. Thanks anyway. Sorry for bothering you. I would say, just continue your life as it was before she got here. It's a hard ask, but if you're planning on staying here, and that's the end of the story. And the more that she sees that you're content here, and that you can take care of yourself here, maybe she'll let that go. Yeah, do you think your mom thinks you're an adult? I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah, that would, that would be nice. Um, well, we were gonna go look at that statue, right? Yeah, we were meeting at the Paramount. Do you want to wait somewhere else and we'll come grab you on the way? No, I'm an adult. And Kay's gonna just pivot and start walking back <laughs> in the direction of the Paramount. Let's go. Uh, let's oh. meet. Let's. Kay, back to the Paramount. Yep. We're adults. Woo! 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 Yeah. Woo! One, two, three. <laughs> adults! <laughs> You guys head back. As you guys have pivoted and turned back in the other direction, looking across, you, there's a crowd there where the open market is, a number of people are selling things and hawking wares. And just as you're t pivoting off to the left to head in the direction of Paramount, you stop, and off in the distance, coming kind of in from the direction of Detention Pass, you see TC <sighs> with a cane in one hand, sort of putting a lot of weight on one side of his body and slowly working his way in from that direction. Oh boy, um, looks like he needs a hand. So let's go meet him. Meet him. It's only 9 a.m. What has he gotten into? I don't know. I'm gonna jog over to TC. Uh, <laughs> hey there, old man. <laughs> What's up? Uh, What's wrong? Oh, nothing at all. That's uh. What, what's the cane? A little scuffed this morning, as you can see. Did someone do this to you? Uh, yes and no. I was out for a a morning amble, and I came across. Did I, did I tell you that I came across that that snivelly son of the the warden? Yes. Yes, you did yes, tell us that. Yes. And decided he decided to slap me the first time he ever met me. And this time he had enough of his friends to, and I'll point up kind of towards the, the cliffs there, huh? to give me a tumble down there. Really? Yes, yes. Luckily, uh, one of, there's a gnomish gentleman up there who tossed this cane down to me. So kind of him. I was just headed to uh, <clears throat> brush myself off, maybe get a, healer's kit from good as gold, but I'm still up for our uh, morning uh, endeavors. Great, if you wanted to, we could probably get back to where they are before we head up to the hill. Did they just uh, attack you out of teach nowhere? Teach them a lesson. This was, no, they're long gone by now. This was at least 20 minutes ago. They just, they just decided to pick on you? You didn't... <laughs> I offend his, my visage offends him so that he slapped me the first time and I guess I didn't genuflect deeply enough this time. Sounds like he has a crush on you. Mm, I wish he wouldn't. I'm sorry, TC. That's <laughs> it's fine. ridiculous. It's fine. I'll be right in a, in a day or two, I'm sure. Until then, I... <laughs> How much do I believe him? <laughs> you may give me an insight check. Go ahead and give me a deception check. Right How much do I believe him? How much do I believe him? No, no, no! You do what? I I choose to trust TC. <laughs> you do. You do what? <laughs> Seven. Thirteen. Oh, fuck. For the time being, CC secret is safe. I mean, you look up and down. He looks like he took a tumble. He's covered in dirt. There's scratches up and down his leg and his arm. Well, a nice bath might help. Yes, truly, truly. But first, to good as gold, I believe. And I, you know, start going. Yeah. I'll Join me you if you want. Win. Sure. I'll, I'll be back to the Paramount as soon as I can. Uh, oh, do you not want company? I... How badly is he walking? Like, is he doing yeah. okay? Like, I mean, he looks like he can't fucked. put weight on. Oh, okay, then we're yeah. yeah. I think we should. <laughs> do you want you. a shoulder? Do you want assistance? I should get used to the cane, I think. But if I were to stumble, thank you for catching. Me. Have okay. you checked in with Doc Sawbones? Do you want to like get it set or anything? Uh, oh, the dog. I. I, I, I I haven't made acquaintance with the doc yet. Uh, uh, he loves bones, so. He 
loves bones. That's his nickname. Well, he can't have any of mine. Oh, Is he going to help he, mine? Maybe he'll just touch them and put them in the right place. A quick trip. We'll see if he's not too busy. Okay. Good idea. Good idea. Thank you. You're welcome. Jesus. Gods. Gods. Escorting to the docks place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Kate mm -hmm. has been there. Oh, you've been there too. You you know where it is, so you lead him sort of in that direction. <laughs> I think together? it's the first yeah. time you've been there. Yeah. Um, so as you get over there, it, the door is closed. It is still early. There is no light on the inside. It's possible that he's either not there or that he might still be sleeping, but you guys, so, you know, with TC, sort of keeping your speed back a little this bit. This doesn't seem to be in. I can always come back later. Seems important enough, TC. <laughs> I'm gonna knock the door. If you mind. Come on, come on. I'm gonna rally. I'll do the talking. The door swings <laughs> open. All right. Good morning, Doc. Good morning. Sorry to make a house call on you so early. Uh, he so sort of pushes past you. What's wrong with you? Had a tumble uh, on the bluffs. Some of the clinkers messed him up. It, don't need to go telling, tattling. Well, he's been messed up real bad. I caught my foot as I tumbled down, and it must have had a little snap at the knee. Problem with the clinkers, huh? Mm. Mm. There's people in Brunk Hollow who are not going to take kindly to that. Come on inside. <laughs> you in my leg! <laughs> you come in. He goes over to a sort of workbench there. Come on in, come on in. He sort of waves the other ones inside. He goes over. He takes out what is, he has sort of a more robust one, but it is effectively a healer's kit. He has one. He comes mm -hmm. over. He has bandages. He has a little splint that he takes out and he puts it. It's just gonna hurt a little bit. Sort of puts it underneath the leg just to sort of set it so it's stiff. Here's a hand, TC. Oh, okay. <laughs> he reaches over to it. It's already open on his shelf, but he takes a. <clears throat> Squeeze tight. And he takes the bandage. <clears throat> Well done, TC. Wraps around it one, two, three, four, five times. And then he gets down to the bottom and he sort of ties it, pulls it off at the end. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's any bone sticking out or any external damage beyond the break. So if you keep it straight and you don't damage it any further, you might be all right, clean up pretty quick. I'll stay off the, the gymnast's plot. It's <laughs> a gymnast plot here. By the Planet Fitness. It's just two gold for the general treatment. Of course. Now, um... If you don't mind, and you look at him eye to eye, and give me an insight check. Oh, boy. Send that bill to the prison. Uh, two goals. Insight. Yeah. Ooh, the goo. 18. 18. As you look at him, you get the sense that people have had problems with the clinkers before, mm -hmm. and the doctor is no friend to the clinkers. Like, yeah. he's clearly had people come in with injuries, whether it was, you know, conflicts yeah. with the clinkers and the people of Broncolo that, you know, are sort of his primary care. He has had to tend to many of those wounds. This would not be the first time that that happened. Mm -hmm. Now, um, do you think you could give me a description Please. of the men that you saw? Please. I will not say that they did not mean to harm me, but the severity of this was not their intention, I do not believe. As I say, I tumbled on the bluff. It was nothing more than a... I'd rather not say. Make a persuasion check. 19. Oh! 
He had like a little piece of paper and a quill out. I will deal with it in my own way. Thank you. All right. If you must. Uh, you ought to get yourself, unless you want to come back here each morning, a healer's kit of your own so that you can redress the wound each day. Now, uh, healing potions would help. They would, but I know they're expensive. Not everybody wants to spend the gold, so I'd recommend it, but you can make do without it. Just a bit longer of a convalescence then. Other than that, I'd recommend plenty of rest. Keep that leg up. Right. No hundred meter dash. I'd advise against it. Well, thank you for your services. I I imagine good as gold is the closest place to get one of these kits. They'd have it. I, I mean, I have some, but if you don't mind getting it from them so I don't have to use my supply. Not at all. Not at all. If we're ever walking through the thoroughfare, and you just, out of the corner of your eye, want to nod at somebody. I leave that up to you. I keep an eye on him. Make sure he don't do no running. Doc, while I'm here, um, you don't have any ringworm treatments, do you? Sort of looks you up and down. You got ringworm? <laughs> uh, not for me. <laughs> it's for a friend who's staying at the Paramount. Uh, I think I got some creams. Do you make those, or? I do make them myself, make them? yeah. Okay. Um, I'll let you know if I need anything. I was just gonna do a favor for someone who... Oh. A little looking a little nasty, but, you know. Right, well, send them by. I'll oh. take a look. Okay, thank you, sir. And check yourself, too. I know. How does it travel? It's, it thrives in moisture. Is so. it, like, like... It, Liquids or like? No, no, like uh, swap and spit. Swap and spit, yeah. Mm, like taking a bath in a bath that someone just took a bath in. Uh, oh, okay. Where there's moisture and it's warm. Mm-hmm. It transfers your fungal growth. Oh. Hmm. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Doc. Oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> TC takes one more. You head out, and Kate follows you out, and he grabs Ilian just at the door there and pulls oh you very quick, like, just quietly. You didn't see it, did you? No. I want to impress upon him to get me to know who it is. All right. I'll leave it at that. I'll keep you in the loop. <clears throat> that did reduce the level, if you didn't already. That is a oh. healer's kit. Uh, oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. But now I can't use another one of these until tomorrow. Until next, yeah, yeah. until tomorrow morning. You can use another one. All right. TC, you didn't seem to want to talk about it in front of Blaylock, but like you said, if you ever see him, I'm sure please let me know. He, he comes around often enough, doesn't he? Oh, As I say, I'd ra right, yes. right. Right. A hornet's nest that may require kicking, but perhaps not at this time. I understand wanting to wait, but if you see them again, and they mess you up like this, I don't know. A couple more times, they might kill you, so you should let us know. I am very aware of my softness and limitations. All right, TC. You guys work your way <laughs> slowly <laughs> back. Can I head to get his gold stuff? Sure, uh, unless there um, did you need no. to do, uh, yeah, go ahead and. Probably get a, a healer's kit and another healing potion. Great, so healing potion is a kit. The healing potion was 60, yeah. a little upcharge here for Broncolo, and then the healer's kit is um, 12, and oh. it has 10 uses. Great, great. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, that was it. Right. Oh, um, yeah, a little dagger. <laughs> sure, didn't mean to get a one of those. A little baby dagger? A little baby dagger. Um, <laughs> yeah, those are just two gold, two gold for that, great. Dagger, healer's kit. Make your way back to Paramount Lodgings 
And as you guys are sort of finishing up your meal, you can hear Doxley regaling Morna of a dumb alien story. <laughs> oh my god! And saw so this boy, twice alien size, at our training camp, covered his plate mail in horse shit. All right. Um, and so alien. Uh, uh, oh god, you're here. Uh, alien the next day decides to go to his cubby. No. And he goes, no. this is in, the it's, biggest it's, rat I've ever seen in his cubby. So that's where that idea came from. Uh, uh, there's a different story to that story. Oh, I had well. to pull that boy off of you. But you did not stop smiling throughout the entire beating that you received, Alien. He he earned it. <laughs> it sounds as though he did. And after Alien sort of comes into the conversation, you guys catch sight of TC limping in through. And you actually you see you see Ilian who sort of hears the story and comes up to you. But what draws your attention to TC is actually you can hear Mr. Uh, Clemens, Mr. Welker. I believe I just saw you this morning. Mm, yes. Something has befallen you. Ah, oh, just a just a bit of a tumble off the bluff. I'll be just fine. I am sorry to hear that. That's all right. I will be uh, probably washing up maybe a book of course. Bath before I set out today. Mr. Welker. <laughs> I'm Are you quite all right. Yes. Yes, I'll be fine. I've got my little stabilizer here. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. I suppose I shall tell it again. Come sit, you come can sit. retell yeah. if you're using the same story. Also, uh, Kate, give me a perception check. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Kate, what are you looking at? What do you want? Nine. Nine. Okay. Oh, man. Heading into the sort of kitchen area of Paramount. Oh, I told you once about a run in I had with a certain gray and green individual. Scuffle took me over the edge of the bluff and I must have caught my foot and it snapped at the knee on the way down. Gods, what villains. Let us go and find these men. That's what I said. Ah, Doxley starts to get up. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> mm. Hits her head on the, the please, top of the booth. Please, She's we tall. have plenty of pressing matters, do we not? As I said already, this is a hornet's kiss. <laughs> This is a hornet's nest asking for a kick, but maybe not yet. All right, please. Make me embarrassed. A little bit of awkward tension, just you can tell that the group is, you know, whatever else you might think, the sort of injustice of it and no love lost for clinkers. Like there's a little agitation mm -hmm. in the air, whether. Mm -hmm. It did not beat me to a pulp. It was just a scuffle that sent me over the bluff. Your leg is broken. <laughs> How will you travel out to the mine if that is what you wish to do today? <laughs> this cane will get me anywhere I need to go. Sir. Uh, excuse me while I dust myself off, please. Um, I'll, you can, you yeah, know where it is. I, yep, you the, have. I know where the bats are down. Yeah, as, as you sort there. of pass back, Mr. Clemens, I don't believe there's anyone in there at the moment. Uh, shout if you need assistance. Rest of your... I choose not to make a deal out of it. If it's his issue, and he impresses upon us that it's not something he wants to tackle, that's his business. As long as he knows that we're there for him, I think that's important enough. Why are they picking what on him? What kind of men does Fort Contrition employ? Who would bully a man in the thoroughfare? People who love power and feeling very big. She drinks her coffee. Man, man, yeah. man. It's cold, but you drink it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I see we're all about having a, about the same kind of morning then. What a morning. I had a great morning. I went to saw Crenshaw. And uh, my armor should be done here soon, which is oh, good news. That is good. That's good. Yeah. Should we go get it and then and then go to look at that statue? Uh, it's not quite done yet, I don't think, but soon. Okay. Um, I was actually, I'm short on healing potions. I was going to go to Good as Gold and try to get some. I didn't know if everybody else was feeling the same sort of strain that I am. Do we want to try to buy a, a bulk? 
order of um, yeah. Well, wow. I am a little low on funds 10. right now. Of course. <laughs> but if I had the money, I would. Yes. <laughs> it's all about the intention there. Yeah. Elia. Um, uh, you, too. you need to buy ten. I just bought in order to get a bulk order. Which is quite a bit. I tried to I tried to offer an idea of a punch card system. Oh my god. But it did not go over particularly well. With Bailey, I would say. Dustin appeared to like it, but I am afraid. I don't wish the brothers to quarrel. Oh. Do you think one of them is more in charge than the other? I think it is Bailey. He is the one who speaks. Oh. <laughs> the only time I've seen a punch card I have is never like seen Dustin. When I've speak. purchased a cupcake or something. Yes, yes some, a pastry, but occasionally coffee, but I don't know. You could use it. What is to stop you from using it on a beer or a... It seems like that's really only something they, they would employ if they're trying to drum up business, and it seems like people get hurt rather often, wow. so yes. may not be a tactic so, mm. they need. So the answer is no, we, we don't need a bulk uh, no, uh, I order. I don't think we can afford that. Very right? good idea. I can't. You what? Really? Cut. Oh, sorry. I thought you said it. <laughs> oh, I mumbled. <laughs> oh, okay. With a T. Gotcha. Cut. Right. Perhaps it is a good idea for the future, but right now I, I'm afraid not. I'll just get some for myself and you, Ellen. If I'll you're gonna go over there. Some point, huh? Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you're leaving and, and walking over there, I'll, I'll walk with you just to get some air. Are you alright? Yeah. Is that true? You make an inside trip? <laughs> a four. <laughs> and it, it, something might seem a little off, but you certainly can't pinpoint it. I mean, if, if she says no, there's, it doesn't seem like you have anything to sort of build on. Cool. Very Where well. Where are people? Sorry. Um, I have a question. Um, yeah. You are, you, you two are dressed in your finer clothes. Is that, are we going to Bison in there? Oh, I just wanted to look nice today while my armor's being fixed. Oh, sure. Are, are you going... I suppose I was supposed to be going as your security, so I'll change. Okay. Great. I will stay as I am. All right. Mm-hmm. I'll change into my going out stuff and... <laughs> Shall we? Yes. Was there anything you wanted to discuss on the way, or were you just looking for company? Nope, just looking for company. <laughs> Make your way to good as gold. Again, we'll sort of... What did you want to purchase? We'll... Uh, let's do... How much money do I have? Uh, let's just do two healing potions. 120. Ooh, money bags over here. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Uh, you, sorry, you said 120. Yeah, it's 60 per if you're not buying. 2d4 plus 4. 1d4 for a second. 2d4 plus 2 is 2d4 plus 2. Uh, okay. Yeah, 2 plus 2. You know, I wouldn't think that uh, one of our own getting shoved off a bluff is going to make you so skittish about walking around town by yourself. No, I'm not skittish. I'm... I just don't want to be alone with my thoughts right now. Well, then let me tell you about the time at training camp with Hillian. <laughs> I would love you. <laughs> he pooped his pants. <laughs> Where do you head to next? We'll meet up back with the group, I suppose. Yeah, sure. While they were doing that <laughs> and just cleaning up, was there any? Um, I think because it's, it's going to help me take another potion 24 hours from now. Taking one now is better. You right? can, yeah. In the privacy, you sort of. Yeah. Are you actually taking a bath, or are you just sort of washing? Yeah. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna bathe. Okay. So as you do, you sort of sit down in there. You reach over out of your pack. You sort of grab the healing potion. That uh, you feel. You can feel the healing energy sort of go right toward that leg. Um, you do still get the full benefits of the heal. It doesn't negate yeah. any of the healing of the potion itself. All right. Two D four. I think if you're doing it for the whole action, oh, you, yeah, get yeah, the whole yeah. thing, you get the whole thing. Right? Oh, ten, right. ten healing. Hey, Dumb Dumb. I'm back up. I'm in the game. <laughs> um, and another, great. and another off the tick off of the old injury. Nice. <laughs> Starting to feel, it no longer has that sort of throbbing yeah. sensation of like an immediate injury. It's sort of now a dull ache there in, in your leg and your knee. I'm gonna spend some time down here. Not long, but. Honestly, after getting all put together, like finding the rhythm of like drawing my mm-hmm. drawing my crossbow and 
trying to quickly put that away and take yeah. out the sword. Oh my god. <laughs> and just practice that a few times. Um, figuring out a place that the dagger fits that is a very qu- a quick draw. Um, While this is going on, one guy sort of comes and... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, can I... Make sure you wash behind your ears! <laughs> Reconvenes that part? before they do. I wanted to ask Morna something really quick or tell her. Um, so was Morna Morna didn't go with you to good as gold? Uh, oh, I was you staying, I was staying. Oh, you stay behind. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, it's just because you seemed as irked about it as everybody else. Uh, Blaylock, if we do want to do something to these clinkers, Blaylock would wishes to know who it was. Mm. Um, I didn't. Say anything as it was TC's wishes, but if it bubbles up, I will see. Doctor Blaylock would like to know. All right, very well. We'll see if I can find out more information. <laughs> well, it was Oregander. I don't know if you know. I remember yeah. him telling me yesterday, the man who struck him. Yeah. Good gods. Right. <sighs> A little more time. People reconvene. They come back. In addition, TC sort of drying himself off. As he comes out of the now the dirt, you can see the scrapes are actually a little more clear now because he's washed off the dirt. So they're just these sort of red abrasions there on his arm and his leg. And do we have a, a specific time for our morning? Bison said the morning. So whenever we're all set, get that over to EOD. <sighs> Sounds great. And EOD is close to Crenshaw's. Vaguely? Mm, no. <laughs> oh, no yeah. I mean, the, the whole town is not that big. Like, it's nothing to, yeah. but okay. yeah. EOD is very close to Paramount. It's just south of the uh, market there. Yeah. That's right. That guy, yeah. that guy right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Never mind. And you you're sure? Oh, well, I'll probably get it after we go, th- or like to run, I don't know. I'll, I'll oh go grab God. it before we go up. That's all. Okay. <laughs> I won't make you leave town without your. Okay, cool. <laughs> you don't think we need some kind of a. Uh, cover story about about oh, what makes us qualified to look at the rocks, those of us who are not. She's looking at the rock, and it's in a, I'm assuming it's in the downwield or something, so downwield's pretty dangerous. We must protect Morna. Our, our dear sweet Morna. She holds she so much <laughs> knowledge about stones. She holds all the secrets. We must protect that knowledge. Correct. All right. Heading to EOD? Yep, let's yeah. do it. Leave. Back out into the thoroughfare. And from down the street, you can see, Doxley, you recognize these most readily because you were there last night. You see those same sort of intricately locked sliding doors that have those series of locking mechanisms. And now they're as far open as the mechanism will allow. It's all the way wide open. Inside are at least a dozen men and women working on the tedious process of getting those wagons out of their very tightly packed parking spaces. You hear a lot of sort of, back it up, back it up, bring it back, and people sort of moving the carts out. Several of the carts are already missing, likely you know, imparted to the first wave of employees that headed out to their assigned quarries. But a couple of authoritative types that look like they have kind of charts and log sheets are working on allocating tools for additional teams of miners, sort of two crates on this wagon over here, and people lift them up, they put them in the wagon. The daily methodical winding up of this very expansive operation. You don't immediately hear or spot anyone that you've spoken to previously at EOD, including Bison himself, whose voice and volume you feel would cut through even some of the clamor. If you're looking for someone in charge, the closest bet would be one of those people that's sort of holding one of those log sheets, as they seem to have more responsibilities beyond being told where to start digging. So that's what's kind of going on. They're backing carts, loading crates, handing off tools, all of that happening at EOD. EOD. Following your lead, Doc. You are the one who arranged this meeting. All right, I'm gonna head over to one of the people with the clipboards. All right, you had the closest one, sort of a muscular dwarf, dirty blonde hair pulled into like a top knot atop his head. He has kind of a groomed goatee on his chin. And he has a, a diverse palette of superficial injuries. One of his fingers is bent. He has a slightly crooked nose that might've been from an old break. A chunk of his uh, right ear is missing. There's scars on his arms, but it doesn't look like a man who's been in a lot of 
like fights against creatures. It looks like a man who's worked manual labor for the majority and just a lot of dinks and dents all over his body from working in the mines. So he's sort of working on two crates over here. Morning. Morning. Spire you a, a moment here. Sure. Uh, we were arranged to meet with Bison. We have a stonemason. Doxley, right? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Bruno. Nice. Uh, Bison says your crew is coming up to the digs to take a look at what we found. That's correct. Uh, big man's already up there. He's seeing to the assembly of the crane. Yes, the crane. I'm one of Bison's surveyors, but just because I can spot signs of a good mithril deposit doesn't mean that I'm some scholarly geologist. Anything at all that you can tell us about the statue is more than I've been able to give Bison so far. So, that's good. He's running out of synonyms for useless to call me. I have to get these wagons moving, and then I have a couple of things to pick up. After that, we can get going. Half hour? Over by detention pass? Sure. Yeah, uh, occupy yourselves. Stone Mason's here. Anything you need to impart onto her before she gets in there? Um, you tell me. You're the experts, apparently. It's already dug up, so you don't need any tools, shovels, pickaxes, or anything. It's in the downwheel, you know, so and have a weapon on hand in case creatures come out that don't scare easily. Other than that, just bring what you need. How Ms. Kennedy is already up there. She is, yes. How deep down is it? Um, probably... There's a bit of a spiral, is a pit, and then there's a hole that goes in after that. He sort of looks at you as you ask that question. Uh, you'll be able to get down there, but it, it won't be easy. I like my chances just fine. Uh, how much room is there around the actual statue? Um, it's been carved out pretty well. Right now it's in a rather open space. Uh, it's a bit of a walk there. It's somewhere between an hour, an hour and a half, depending on the pace. Again, he sort of looks at TC. <laughs> Part of the journey may be familiar to you. I understand that you might be the same crew that stood lookout for the clinkers coming through the gully. That's mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. We'll follow that same river for a while and then break off to the left, work our way through the hills. The good news is our teams have been back and forth from that site so many times, the trail's clear as day. You couldn't get lost if you tried to. Great. Um, nice to meet you. Thank you, Brad. And uh, thanks again for giving Bison someone to yell at besides me. Mm. I'll see you at detention in 30. Great, Jarvis. Right. And he goes back to his business thing. Mr. Welk, we should rent you a horse. That's all. I'm gonna send a wagon. We'll pull him along or I a little one walk. Or maybe just you should fine. just rest. I do not think a rest will get me to 100%. I will be just fine. A wheel Someone stays nearby. I. <laughs> Let us get him. I'd be horse. happy to ease your burden, TC. I'll wheel you the whole way. I would find that. Very insulting, young man. <laughs> All right, just thinking. Stand by walking. my side. I will hold your least, head high with me. I hope you're not too self-conscious to ask for a piggyback ride. That does sound exciting. <laughs> Perhaps shoulder to shoulder. Uh, Ilian's like, what about my wheelbarrow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I. <laughs> I'm going to Bernard's and I'm gonna turn and just start walking towards Bernard's. Bernard's morning. morning yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? See you in 30 minutes. Any um, errands? Wish to run? Things to at some point something. grab Crenshaw's and yep, get you can head in that direction. Yeah. Anybody else? So we're walking oh, the same. God. Yeah, loosely in the same direction. Fucking lucky heathen. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> heading. <to the> <laughs> Te just test myself with the see how fast and how you okay. kind of go up and down the third. Kate is gonna be like so lost in her thoughts that all of a sudden she, everybody is gone, <laughs> and then she's just gonna see Ilian and like start just like run off in that direction. <laughs> okay, so the people that went kind of uh, north there, um, Ilian, Morna, and Kate, mm -hmm. all uh, give me perception checks. Okay. Yippee, fifteen. I'm sorry, what did you yeah, ask for? Rolls, nice. uh, not where you were headed, just oh, okay. three of them. Okay. 19. 19. 15. Excellent. Um, as you guys are walking through, it, after a couple of days where the skies were only interrupted by some brief passing showers, you look up now and you see sort of endless swaths of dense clouds. It's very overcast today. The whole town appearing just a little more drab, a little less energized. 
It seems that the miners know the weather very well. They're sporting layers upon layers of clothing to sort of keep warm during periods of inactivity, but with the option to shed layers once they sort of work up a sweat in the mines. Those at the open market know how to adjust their pitch as well. You see one man boiling water over a small contained fire, and while he waits, he grinds roasted cocoa beans across, uh, and a sort of scooping in a large mortar and pestle with sprinkles of sugar, a little bit of hot cocoa that he's making. Another person has put on, uh, has put a collection of fur hats on display, very warm looking fur hats, beaver, raccoon most abundantly, but also some exotic choices, uh, jackals, giant weasels, so a number of these sort of fur hats that they have on. As you're going in the direction, you sort of are passing by the open market, but before you pivot to the left, you catch out of the corner of your eye a pair of individuals who might have stood out more on a sunnier day to the, due to their very dull colored attire. The muted grays and greens oh. of a clinker uniform. <laughs> swallowed up now by the crowd of heavy overcoats moving through the thoroughfare. These two clinkers are just east of the open market, so in the maybe 10, 15 yards off toward Detention Pass. And it looks like they're holding small stacks of paper and handing them out to anyone that will take one as they pass by. And in true sort of stubborn Broncolo fashion, most people sort of ignore them or brush them off as they try to distribute these flyers, but you do see the occasional the curious citizen take a look at what they've got. Both of the clinkers that are handing out flyers are recognizable to the party. Fuck me. Because they were both present at the bridge when it was attacked by the sea spawn and the Sahuigans. Morna, you recognize one of them. One of them, Ilian and Kate, you recognize both that person and the other one. One of them was there at the initial point of attack and one of them was there as the reinforcements arrived as you guys were crossing gotcha. over the bridge. There's a human man who has his arm in a sling, but he still has use of it, like he's using it to kind of hold the flyers. It doesn't seem completely sort of broken. While the other man is Elvin, kind of has braided dark brown hair, sort of looks like he's got kind of raised shoulders, almost trying to puff himself up a little bit. The human man looks like he's in his late 20s, shoulder length, reddish brown hair, matching tattoos on his shoulders that you can see because his coat is off of one arm so that he can have the arm in the sling and you can see the shoulder on that arm and it has that sort of dagger tattoo on the arm. And as they're sort of trying to hand things to people, you can see them as he's sort of holding it with one. Fugitive from Fort Contrition! Fugitive from Fort Contrition! He's sort of handing things out. Mm. So you guys see that happening on that side? You don't have to head in that direction, but you, everybody sort of clocks that at the same time. I have half a mind to go talk to them about Oregander, but I won't do that for TC's sake. No, he's too proud for that. <laughs> <laughs> And Let's go beat up that crippled guy. <laughs> Does, do I think he sees me? He has not yet. He's a little ways off. He de they're very focused on the task of handing out the flyers. Like he definitely does not currently Great. see Great, I'm gonna attempt to not be seen by this <laughs> Okay, guy. give me a skill check with advantage. You can kind of <laughs> sort of disappear into the crowd a little bit, especially if you don't head in that direction. Okay, nice. Um, that is a 20... A 21. Great. Wow. As you sort of turn your back, you can talk to Kate and Ilian, but your back's very much to them. And, and you're right at the open market there. It's crowded here, so yeah. you can disappear into the crowd pretty easily. Great. That's what I would like to do. <laughs> you does, it, yeah. it, does it seem any different? Or that she's just trying to get through the crowd to me? Um, she, you can see that she sort of turns away from it, but other than that, nothing else. I'm going to uh, grab one, just so we know. We're in the loop. Very well, yeah. yes. I'm going to yeah. run over and... Great. Fugitive from Fort Contrition! I know we're not likely to appeal to anyone's sense of duty around here, but there's a healthy reward for capture or information that leads to capture. Thank you. Thank you. Fugitive from Fort Contrition. Fugitive, take one please and report to the FCI offices if you hear or see anything. And they sort of continue to... You know. He's hot. He's hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You idiots. <laughs> He's hot. What's the reward? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a really big reward? Oh, my God. Big reward. That was the man, by the way, that we were talking with the merchant tattoos. Ah, yes, I recognize him. Uh, I can't speak to anyone from the prison. I will, I'm too cross. <laughs> I see. 
You see, uh, who was? <laughs> He's pretty awesome. Uh, somebody, as you guys were heading across the bridge, heard the name Marcel. Yeah, we heard them. Yeah, you heard them. So it seems to match up with that. This seems to be one of the escaped prisoners that you were Marcel looking. Row, as in Marcel Rowe, as in fish egg. As in fish egg. He's a sea elf. You know, they have aquatic names sometimes. <laughs> well, noise. <laughs> Damn, noise. Wow. All right. Five hundred gold. Damn. Okay. Not that I don't doubt this man having done something violent and or dangerous, but anyone getting locked up by the clinkers, you know, not, I'm not passing judgment on right away. Well, not anyone. Think of all the people were slaughtered on that bridge. Prisoners and guards alike. That's true. I wouldn't. Dozens of men. Powerful man. I wouldn't blame someone for wanting to get away from that situation. Well. We're just, just gonna head down, sort of keep on walking, yeah. sort of avoiding the eyes of those yeah. guys. As soon as you start to head, you know, in down the thoroughfare in the other direction, you disappear. I mean, they're not—they're right. not like walking through the thoroughfare. <laughs> they're standing in one spot, so they're not coming in your direction. Oh, great. So you guys uh, will we'll, um, go to Ilian. We'll say you go to pick yeah. up your armor. Awesome. He has it ready to go. Flex weave splint armor. Ooh. Yay! Yeah. The dents have been ironed out very nicely. Yes. In addition to its regular every other effect that you're aware of, once per long rest, when an enemy scores a critical hit on an attack against you, you can roll a d20, and if it's 11 or higher, it's still a hit, but it's not a critical hit. Yo! So you have a chance to negate a critical hit wow. at once yeah, per yeah. long rest. No fair, he leveled up, I leveled down! <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't free. Yours was free. <laughs> didn't have to pay for it. We don't know that. <laughs> I guess we don't know. <laughs> um. All right, so at that point, Ilian branches yes. off. Hey, did you go with Ilian to Jacob yes. Jaws in that Kate direction? Is following, following Ilian around. Okay. So, Definitely. Morna, you head over to Bernard's, and you can see he's out in that fenced in area, sort of leading a couple horses around, sort of getting them back toward the barn. Excuse me. Good morning. morning. Something I can help you with? Can I rent a horse for the day? You can, yeah. How much would that be, sir? It does require a 75 gold deposit, just in case the horse gets injured. Oof. Um, and if the horse is returned un uninjured, how much would that be? Five gold per day. Oh, very good. I will do it. Very well. And I'm gonna give him the 75 gold to hold, and... Before I allow you to do this. Yeah. Oh. Is the intention to give this to TEC yes. so we can ride? I will say, ride. having taken the route that you got, you guys will be mostly familiar with this route up into the downwield. There are parts of it that riding a horse might be difficult. Not the whole thing, but you would might have to like tie it up somewhere or walk it through some like shallow water. So oh, it's <laughs> it's just something you might have to manage a little bit. I'm it's not, it's not, it won't not provide any help, but, okay. but it also Mike. could get injured. Yeah. I mean. Fuck it. Let's do it. Great. <laughs> All right. You pick out a horse and bring it over, so it brings the leader. You want it now, or you want to come back for it? I'll take him now. Very well. This one's Daisy. Oh. Good morning, Daisy. Daisy. <laughs> okay. Um, and I will, uh, do I need like a saddle and stuff or is that all provided? It's, it's as long as the horse doesn't come back injured or the saddle, saddle doesn't come back damaged, it's Great. all part of it. Yeah. I'm gonna, um. So you did have to pay him <laughs> 75 up front. Great, yep. I gave him 75 Great. for sure. Um, and I'm gonna hop on Daisy and head towards Detention Pass. Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I'll walk Daisy, I'll buy the clinker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm, <laughs> Rewind. I'm going to walk yeah. high, Daisy. I don't really want to yeah, like, be high up. Yeah, I, I would like to blend back into the crowd sure. as I walk by. You may do so. Yeah. Um, let's head over to um, Lucky Heat. Yeah. When you, uh, placid as it often is in the mornings, the Lucky Heathen is actually at a very a new level of sedation when you step up to the door. It's so quiet that you think you can even hear glasses clinking in the next room where the staff is like washing cups and things from the night before. There is a series of short posts connected by lengths of rope that form a barrier around the main floor, like the main gaming floor. 
and it looks like it might be sectioned off while they install some new gaming tables, though it's not clear yet what those might be. But it looks like some of the tables you've seen before have been pushed to the side, made room so there's like an open space in the middle where it looks like they might be adding some new tables. Playing Go. Like Playing Go. <laughs> like Pachinko. Tekken 7. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pac-Man. Huge. The only people <laughs> present right now are Mr. Haas and Mrs. Montero, who are both sitting over by the bar. Teddy in his floral vest, Chelsea in a kind of fitted sort of pantsuit-esque outfit. And the two of them converse very quietly, occasionally gesture toward the roped off area. It seems they're discussing where things might be put, where things might be going. And despite their customarily fine attire, their body language is a little more relaxed. They're not sort of in there entertaining, you know, owning the, bar, owning the uh, casino sort of state. A little casual, a little lean back, relaxed. It's funny to see the small differences in how the, they comport themselves when they think they're sort of selling the experience or not. As you enter through the doors, you do see Chelsea sort of, ah, nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. I hope the morning's treating you good. I'm sorry if you are here to play. Wagon's coming in this morning with a couple of custom tables that we had ordered. That's very exciting. Um, no, mom, I'm not here for that. Oh, my apologies for the assumption. Um, I'm actually here to follow up on getting that favor back from the goblins that we disposed of. Yes, I believe we're working our way through our debts. That's all right. Uh, Teddy, if you wouldn't mind, and he sort of bows and he walks sort of off in the direction of the kitchen. Please, sit. Thank you. What is it we can do for you? Are you able to get somebody an appointment at Fort Contrition to see a prisoner? Hmm. Well, depending on who you're trying to arrange a sit down with, that could be a very small favor <laughs> or a very large favor. Liam and I, self-described heathens that we are, <laughs> Don't make a habit of exchanging kindnesses with the one bastion of faith in Brunk Hollow Valley. Still, the men and women that work there aren't all sycophants, so we are not completely lacking in friendly associates. Well, the prisoner that I'm asking after, the most I know of him is that he was sent there because he seemed to be a bit of a road agent, hmm. causing trouble between Saywall and Ayr. My first question was whether you are privy to the severity of their perceived crimes. Are there any accusations leveled against this person for the use of magic? I don't have an answer for you there. Were their crimes perpetrated against people or places belonging to a religious institution? Not an answer for you there either. Finally, have you any notion of their record of recent behavior behind bars? Frequent agitators are rarely rewarded for their unruliness. Not an answer for you there either, Miss <laughs> Montero. Do you know this person? I don't, in fact. Ah. To be fully honest, it's uh, a favor for a client of mine. Mm -hmm. Trying to put in a good favor for him, so cashing in a favor here to pay a favor there. I see. Well, if they don't have a reputation for defiance, and they have not violated the greatest sin, I think that something could be arranged. If they do, or have, you might need a different kind of friend. Are you staying at the Paramount? I am, yes. I will have words sent when we made contact at the fort, if you would give me the name. Yes, um, his name is Okamir. Okamir. He's a, an orc from the mountains. I haven't heard of it, which is a good, good sign. Good sign? Fantastic. Um, yeah. Just looking to have a face-to-face. -face. I'll send someone over. See if I can get a read on what kind of reputation this Okamir has. I appreciate that. I'm curious if it's somebody that's been working with Horton Boyd at all. There's more than one band of road agents, I would imagine, coming into Broncolo, yes? I would imagine. You don't have any issues with the Boyds, do you? No. We don't send for supplies all that often. Got it. Well, I appreciate your time. Don't I hope I can do something for you, and therefore consider the favor paid. Don't like being in debt, do you? 
just don't like when things linger. All right, well, if this doesn't work out, I'll keep my ear to the ground. Cheers. Morning. Can I have them go? Your business? Head back outside. A little bit of an arrangement put together there. Yes. Any other last bits of business before you all reconvene at Detention Pass? What? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Can I walk by without being seen again? <laughs> Give me a stealth check, not with advantage this time as you move by. Oh, of course. Okay. Use that horse. Yeah. I'm hiding horse behind shield. Them, but, but I'm a, I'm a yep. tall woman. Okay. Um, that is uh, 15. 15. Nice. You do keep the horse interposed between you. As you're walking by, you can hear that sort of fugitive from Fort Contrition, sort of the, a little shouting out to the crowd, but you stay the whole time close to the horse. A couple times you hear the kind of um, walking. Yeah. You lead the horse over to detention pass Great. without being seen. Anybody else? Anything else before you report? No. Let's go. What the, <laughs> I just want to say, as soon as Kate sees that horse, oh, we God. meet up. <laughs> Her <laughs> eyes light oh, up. Kate is gonna like walk slow, walk towards the horse, and just look at Porta and be like, "Who is this?" <laughs> um, this is Daisy. <laughs> I got her from GC. Daisy, and just like pull in through the back of the neck, like Give me an animal forehead handling to check. forehead. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've been rolling thing. really Daisy's poorly thing. tonight. <laughs> what? What did you say? 23. 23. Wow. You pull the horse in close, and it, it resists a little bit, but you sort of gently pat the side of its head, and then it ducks its head. Daisy. Oh. <laughs> Just having a completely <laughs> private moment here. <laughs> and one of the next people to report, TC <laughs> from a distance is moving and you see the horse and you sort of know <laughs> immediately what it might be there for. I believe you shall elongate my convalescence with embarrassment, but thank you. That is not my intention. If we could all take horses, I would like that, but it is a little pricey for that. Daisy is happy to help you. <laughs> the, the horse will, will be not, more of a burden than I will. No, sir, <gasps> you will not be able to outrun us. Block your ears, Daisy. What? I'll take first. You go slowly. High watch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very well. With their help a little bit, you get yourself mm. up on the horse. Mm. Push the rump firm. Ilian returns, Doxley returns. Ilian and his armor looking much snazzier than the last time you saw it. You can't actually see the flex weave <laughs> from the outside, but the dents have been ironed out and it, it definitely looks like a, not quite like new, but as good as a, as a used set of armor can. All right. Are we ready? It's a nice horse. Daisy. Daisy. You look good up there, TC. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you really do want to walk, I'll take a break and I'll ride on Daisy. I will stretch my legs soon enough, thank you. Okay, great. <clears throat> Start to move over. As you approach the sort of first part of detention pass, you can see that Bruno's already waiting for you. His arms are raised, not for waving, but he's tying his sort of unruly hair back into a knot atop his head. He has a backpack down by his feet and a spear slung through two loops on the back of leather chest armor that he's now wearing. It's a further reminder that while the road you're taking is very well traveled, it is always best to be prepared in the event of tricky gricks or ruffled griffins. He also has a couple of bottles affixed to his belt containing slightly different shades of a pale yellow liquid. Recognizable most ready, readily to Doxley, who saw the Samson Brothers collections of both essences and animal urines that can be used to either attract or <laughs> repel creatures as they catch on to the scent. When he spots you coming, you see him nod, sort of motions towards you. He takes a couple steps toward you to meet you as he's fitting the spear, the sort of back of his armor there. And then he sort of, once again, sort of shakes a couple hands, goes around a little bit. Okay, we'll take the road north, follow it up to the dig site, see what kind of progress they've made on the crane. Can't imagine they'll be ready to fish it out by the time we get there. So like I said, you're probably going down into the dig to look at it. If you want to wait up at the surface, you are welcome to. Might be better that way anyway. That way you see where it came from. I think for all my trouble, I would like to try 
and see it, please. I leave that up to you. Uh, experience with stone as well? A bit. Hmm. Oh. Alright. Um, <laughs> there are going to be parts of the trail that you'll have to walk the horse through. Very prepared. Alright. Lead the way. All right. yeah. Let's go. Alright. Grabs his backpack, slings it over his shoulder, and the journey begins. Uh, Doxley will give you a healing potion that you bought. Yippee! Thank you. Oh You're welcome. <laughs> TC sees that. them pass it and he's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> With Bruno at the front of the pack, you march down the pass, and just a few minutes later, you take a left into the woods. All of you striding forth with confidence and TC riding on the horse. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that'll be you. All of you moving again confidently because you've been down this road before. You see tawny magpies chirping away in number and the terrain starts its gradual mild incline that gets a little bit of the blood pumping, thighs burning a little bit. TC sees everyone else kind of trudging forth and despite sort of your initial protest, uh, you feel good in this particular moment that you're atop the horse. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so many carts Horses and pairs of boots have followed this path that there's a clear delineation even if it hasn't been paved or dug out in any intentional kind of way. There's no way that you could accidentally wander off this trail. And Bruno walks ahead. He keeps his eyes and ears open. You can see that he just kind of occasionally checks in. He'll look up at the trees. In your experience before, you've seen some of the gricks drop down from the trees. He doesn't seem worried, but he just... It seems like it's very practiced, the whole thing. He's walked this road a number of times. He'll look up, he'll look over, he'll look around. But he's walking up ahead, maybe 10, 15 feet from the rest of the group. You have a little bit of a moment here while you're walking, some time with your companions, a little rare moment of familiarity within the downwheel that you just have a moment here as you're, as you're traveling. Question. Just because I lost sight of who had it, but did someone give those goblin bones over to the goblins? I told you, I gave most of them. I kept one. Oh. Wait, you told us? Yes. Uh, like out of character? No, I told you anything. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yes, I, 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 I did. You, Deirdre, told Talon? And yes. Talon and Gordon <laughs> told the <laughs> Don't I have Gotcha. One? You have the, you have one, the, that one. You, the yeah. one that she brought back. One that's left. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Rewind that. And then, <clears throat> so, this morning, uh, I came across Clark Bark, <laughs> our goblin friend. Did friend! Uh, or, sure. And uh, he said, uh, they got bones back, everything's good, and... Um, everything's good? Except for that they want some swords. They want swords to defend themselves from other goblins that are going between things. Of course they just do. give goblin swords, I Elian. didn't, I didn't. Thank God. I, I wanted, because the weird thing is, he told me about the bones. He's like, if you give us swords, I'll tell you about the bones. And I was like, what kind of, I don't see any reason to that. But that makes me think that- your friend identified them. Hmm? I thought your friend identified them. Oh, um, they were Grick, right? That's what she said. Yeah, she said they were Grick bones, but I mean, I don't, she didn't identify the cultural significance of them. I just thought it was weird that he thought he could leverage getting weapons for information on the bones. So that, I just wanted to tell you guys Maybe about that he experience. Was doing a little tricky dicky on you, you know? Hey, Sounds like have. a load of bullshit. <laughs> probably the bones was. don't mean jack shit. Yeah, it's probably true, uh, but that was- Did just... you promise him some swords? No, I just tried to get more information about the bones if he thought they were so special. Mm. I didn't get anything and then he scampered off. Mm. It, it was interesting, but- well, Maybe we could ask some, one of the other goblins in town about the bones and- Yeah, I, I mean, now that I'm saying it out loud, I actually realize I really don't care. <laughs> About <laughs> everything about this this situation, the goblins are trying to arm themselves. Yes, weren't these the ones that already had crude weapons? Yeah, they were tools, which were shaved down into. They weren't proper weapons. Not proper weapons, but yes. But it seems like there's some clashing between goblins and raids happening on their things. Or... Is this not something that Mr. Hank Honk would want to know about? Don't could, you think? It could be. Maybe. Not that we need to get everything to just share some nice information, but there could be something there. And help Hank Honk, he'll help us in some way. Perhaps, yeah. I'm sure he worked hard to have this tenuous peace between them. And a slew of goblins 
taking up arms is not gonna help that. No. TC, indeed. it's nice to see you care about what Hang Kong thinks. I don't know. It's a nice change. I care about goblins not running around with swords. That's fair. That's fair. Well, that's all. That's all I wanted to share about that, but... Yeah. And he didn't mm -hmm. tell you anything else about the bones? No. Hmm. I know nothing. Besides that they're probably just Greek bones and he's trying to get swords. Sure. Well, I'm sure that the Greek bones have a significance to them. It's just whether or not it has a significance to us as well. Mm. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it has no significance to me. I, so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, the more I talk, the less I care. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who brought this up? Shut up. <laughs> Dumb conversation. The story's dead. Don't bring it up again. <laughs> hey, can Kate kind of like go over and like get Bruno's attention? Yeah, he's walking ahead a little bit, yeah. but maybe you catch up a little bit. <clears throat> Problem. Oh, no. I was just going to ask you a question. Uh, sure. Yeah, as we're walking. Um, <coughs> does the name Rommel Klein mean anything to you? Yeah. Mm. Tales. A man on the outside uh, robbed, stole, made a bit of a name for himself. I heard that he died. <laughs> Sorry if you're looking for him. No, I, I ran into a man in the woods. Who claimed to be Ramo Klein? <laughs> oh, you're serious. <laughs> I mean, it happened. I don't know if that man was serious or not. I doubt it. Well, anyway, he said, I'm back. Tell everybody I'm back. So um, I've been telling people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this lunatic who claimed to be Ramo Klein told you to spread the word and you've been spreading the word. That a lunatic claiming to be Romo Klein is bad. I mean, he may not be Romo Klein, but he, he had a giant crossbow, so he may be dangerous in his own way. Did you receive something in exchange for doing what he asked? Mm -hmm. No. He just kind of freaked me out a little. Yeah. I wanted people to know about it. Maybe don't freak out other people by spreading the word. <laughs> I don't know. Someone mysteriously dies but no one can say for sure that the man is dead? People have said for sure that the man is dead. <laughs> okay. Don't bring it up at the dig site. You got it? <laughs> <laughs> this fucking <is> crazy. <laughs> As you're walking, you get to another landmark that you recognize. A stretch of walking by a small brook that could be very close to where you actually found the Gricks munching on mm -hmm. what you later found out to be... Um, Max Labs. Max Labs. Max Labs. Yeah. Max Labs. Max Labs. Uh, Max Labs corpse. Max Labs. Oh. This time, though, instead of sort of continuing that trajectory, Bruno angles off to the northwest. You kind of stay where the trees are thick rather than make for the gully that's marked uh, sort of your first paid opportunity in Brunk Hall. You sort of look off to the right and you can see a little where you were headed initially in the distance. As you make that turn, he sort of falls back a little bit and speaks to the party once more. Now from here, because we don't have wagons, we're going to take a little shortcut up to the dig site. It's nothing that a regular man can handle. We have miners take it every day. Probably see some coming back in the other direction. It's a little ridge over some water, uh, sort of a pond or a lake. And, uh, on foot or on horse, it saves a good bit of time rather than going the long way. We call it Pocket Aces Pass because you're lucky if you get to take it back to camp instead of being stuck escorting the wagons. It's not steep and there's no climbing, but you may have to walk the horses across the ridge. It's not so narrow that the horse can't make it, but a horse might get a little spooked if you don't walk them slow. Somebody is willing to walk the horse for me. I would appreciate that when I'll we do come it. to it. Thank you. And if we get there and your leg's not up to it, we can turn back and take the long way. No, no, I'm sure I'll be up to it. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Again, sort of takes off in a sort of more northern direction. As promised, he leads you off the trail that's marred with these sort of overlapping wheel tracks. But it's obvious that the secondary path isn't some like secret little, you know, off the beaten path. There's dozens of divots and impressions in the soil where heavy footed laborers working their way back after a long day have clearly, you know, hauled mithril and moved through this area. 
you snake back and forth in kind of some wide meandering arcs that avoid some rock formations. He's not sort of just leading you in a you know, formation. And not long after that, you can hear the sound of flowing water. Once more, yet another one of the many little trickling tributaries that run through these parts, making the land fertile, filled with life. Up ahead in the distance, you can start to see some rocky hills that are rising gradually. And Bruno is making kind of straight for those hills, moving toward a kind of small little encapsulated lake that's sort of in the confines of this hill area here. There's these little bridges of stone land that can kind of get you from one bank of the lake to a sort of spot in the middle and then to the other side of the lake. So there's like a couple little natural land bridges, not man-made bridges that sort of cross across this lake here. As you get closer, it's a stunning sight. It, it's a place that you might like to re revisit. Like you could go for a wonderful swim here. You could jump off of the bridges into the lake down below. You can see some of the um, geese that are floating on the surface, several other common critters that are sort of crouched by the water's edge, lapping at the water there, cool, clear water. It's a truly uncivilized spot in the best possible use of the word. Like even though people walk through here, it's unspoiled. It looks like a true sort of beacon of nature that's mm. rising up in front of you here. You get to the first sort of extended rocky bridge and Bruno stops and he looks back. This uh, time to get down. Doxley will. And he sort of is he's increasing his volume a little bit because you can hear some of the some of the water that's trickling into the lake here. I'll let Doxley take my hand. I'm along. Ah, thank you. I'll grab hold of the reins. Right, yeah. grab the reins of the horse. Thanks. All set. Mm. Let's go. All right. Right here. As it gets, the horse gets a little closer to the bridge, you can feel its trepidation. It's coming, but slowly, like it, it, you can feel its hooves sort of skidding against the rock there. Give me an ammo handling check. Okay, here we go. Thank you. <laughs> God, what else? Uh, 19. 19. Nice. You sort of, as it pulls against the reins, you l l slacken your grip a little oh. bit to let it know that you're not sort of forcing it, and it stops, and then take some measured steps as you sort of lead it forward. It's a little sort of monkey see, monkey do, like you take one step and you wait, the horse takes one step, you take another step, you move away across. So you get across this little stone natural bridge, and you get to an area in the center that, as he said, it's. It's not quite an island, it's just like a raised sort of rocky platform. So there's one bridge to that platform and then another bridge to the sort of place where you're heading on the opposite side here. And I need everybody to give me perception checks. Oh, oh hell yeah. 18. Also 18. Dirty 20. 13. 15. 15. Nice job, guys. Yeah, that's good As you get to that first island, he looks back and he sees Kate sort of pulling the horse along. Good job. One more. And he points to the next sort of bridge there. And he's walking over in that direction. And you just, all of you that got above a 15 or above, and you see, you look down and someone has shot him in the side with an arrow there. And you look up into the trees where there's a little bit of rustling. One more round of perception checks oh for anyone. Uh, not you, because you didn't roll the 15. Anyone who right. rolled 15 or higher? Oh my God, it's fucking that one. 11. 15. 18. 18 and 15. The nice. two of you look up and you can see a couple of figures. They look elven in shape and they look like they're sort of bearing down on the group, like they're about to lose some arrows. Stop. I need everybody to roll initiative for me. <gasps> ah. Kate, you are surprised. So oh, you're no. not going to act in the first round. You That's are conditioned surprise. <laughs> As you look around, you can what? see that there's some kind of ambush that's been set up in here, and I need uh, the two people, TC and Morna, give me one more round of perception checks oh. before your initiative there. Um, uh, 21. 21. Uh, uh, four. There is something, they are clearly elven, like they look like elven humanoids, but there is something off about them. <gasps> something that you can't quite place, a little dead in the eyes, like a little bit of a, a, a like a blank stare. Mm -hmm. And if you're not mistaken, there's like pieces of flesh missing from their arms in a few places. Okay. And you're seeing them kind of up in the trees there. I'm gonna show you what this, what this looks like here. Should we turn these on? Uh, give me one Frick. second. Oh. What? Rokolo has zombies now? So, zombies. like, not like a wood elf, like I would recognize. I mean, they look like wood elves, but, but there's also something affected. off about them. Okay. Yes. Uh, go ahead and turn no your monitors elves. on. Yeah, no oh bugs. <gasps> this one. There it is. Oh, 
it is. Oh my god. Man, I kind of like Bruno. Ooh! So, this is like the little bridge Bruno. that you came across. This That's the first really bridge. Cool. Here's the little lake that you're walking awesome in here. So, you are you are spread out kind of around here. So, they the figures are up in these trees here that they seem to be waiting in these trees. And we're coming towards them. You are you are coming you're coming down this path and then you were heading off over here. Okay. Oh. And uh, and so you some of you are up here, some of you are back a little further, but this is the terrain that you're looking at. They're up in the trees with bows in hands. They seem to be not in any mood to negotiate. They don't yep. stop at all, but that's where we're going to pick it up next week. No. Oh, no. 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 As we no. learn the zombie. who might have been waiting here for you. What? What, what was the roll in your perception? To over 20. Over 20? <gasps> oh! 21. Shh. What'd you Show see? Us, Mom. What'd you see, boy? What the fuck? One second. I like that plus nine. Mm -hmm. I rolled yeah. a 12. Ooh. Ooh. That's nine. Wow. Wild. Oh my god. I know. The figure that you see. There's a number of figures that look very, very similar. This sort of dead in the eyes, elven appearance. Yeah. And then there's one of them who's perched up in the tallest tree and they seem to have their hand in like this motion as if to have just given the fire symbol. Got it. So you immediately pick out that target as being someone who might have given the order initially. All right. He has very long flowing hair and these sort of high cheekbones, a stubbled chin, and much of his body is sort of hidden in the trees there but down by his side is a rather large crossbow. Oh my God. And after sort of giving oh the motion, God. he looks like he's in the process of bringing up this oversized oh. crossbow here to point it in the direction of the group. Ah! Uh, and that's where we're gonna pick it up. TC <laughs> does a poo poo <laughs> in his pants. <laughs> the fucking zombie got his rubble clyde is back. As you may recall, when Kate spoke of him, he seemed intent on targeting Bison's people specifically. He asked yeah. you if you were one of Bison's oh. you know, uh, envoys. Oh, this looks bad then. Not Bruno being like, don't scare people. <laughs> Yikes. He's gonna be like, that's him! And he's like, I don't fucking know! <laughs> <laughs> we're friends, remember? You uh. let me go! <laughs> Oh no! Oh wow. wow, man, that is where we're gonna we have to. Up next time, I'm fucking kill a bunch oh. of zombies right now, and I can't walk. Oh, I can't bring that one up. <gasps> what are you trying to do? I'm, I'm the in the, the, on the small map. I'm in the here. fucking woods, man. I, I'm cute. Dude, so that's totally Robo Clan, but he he could be Fun. back from the dead. Yeah, so we can. Uh, I'll put. Uh, I'm gonna put all the people, but um, like Bruno was out over here, so working his way toward the next thing. Okay. Um, uh, did the arrow go like in through his? Or like like raised the thigh, kind of. Oh, yeah. It wasn't, you cool. didn't get the big chunk. It did not look like it was Ramo's yeah. the big chunk. Okay. The figure who might be Ramo. Does Ramo have the similar, the flesh and stuff? The the affectation? Or he looks like a regular uh, Difficult to tell. He's okay. a little more obscured in the trees there. Um, let's go ahead and put people Oh, on horsey, here. where's horsey? Um, Kate was in the back, she was the one leading the yeah, horse. So Katie, Kate was back oh, here. Oh, I'm protecting Daisy with my um, I was Morn. helping. You're about to blow 75 TC. gold on this house. You were helping TC. Really? Okay. So Morna and Ilian were probably the closest to the front. There's Morna. Could have bought me a healing potion to Ilian. fix my legs. You said you got some. I go worse so that you wouldn't have to walk. Why is Ilian up in the air there? Knock that off. Come down. There we go. Come down. I want to climb. <laughs> you can. Um, and then Doc's leave us to the back. Of the TC. Oh, no, I want to keep playing. <laughs> and we'll put the horse on the uh, board as well when we get there. Yeah, back. we should never yeah. stop so you guys never get to see what happened earlier in the episode. Oh, I'm watching it right now. We're going to watch it right now, okay? Yeah, watch it right now. They literally don't know. In Twitch, they don't know what happened. They didn't watch it. They didn't chat. They have no idea. We're going to be in the Discord watching your scene. And be like, oh my god! So, so join we'll the Discord. When we get back, we'll see what these uh, sort of uh, rather unearthly creatures sort of come I bearing down on the party. Out oh, how he got have here. we like Guys. seen undead before? Like undead exist, yeah. No, I know they exist, but like in like the docks area. You guys would have seen them. Okay. There's sometimes like undead sort of rising from graveyards in major cities and stuff. Again, it's usually okay. it's usually quashed pretty quickly yeah, by town okay. guard and stuff. Like this isn't unheard of that there would be something undead okay. in, in the world. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we all yeah, I mean shit. it's rare and it's scary, but it's not. It's not. Oh, it's, it's not. It's not like you didn't think they existed. Okay. Yeah. All right. We, 
That's fine. Oh, oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. Wait. Oh <laughs> my god. Okay, well, it was nice knowing you, Daisy. Well, no. <laughs> I used the meat shield, horse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought you were talking about me at first. <laughs> the meat oh, shield. My piggy. <laughs> <laughs> my, no, I need you as my piggy later. All right, everybody. <laughs> Oh my god. We hope you enjoyed the show. Great episode, everybody. This is where we're going to pick it up next week, right in the middle of combat. Oh, oh man. Wasn't there a special treat after this trip? Mm. Oh, yeah, there's a special treat. So we special leveled treat. up last episode. Thank you. Leveled up oh last god, episode, no obviously. We've trimmed it down for the purposes of social media, but it was truly one of the most unhinged <laughs> sessions it, of rolling. I don't want to think about it. I'm, not, I'm leaving. I'm not. Um, it's be chaotic. So it's, it's hard to let go of. So I'm giving you the full version. No now. way. Um, that Was you it can like enjoy. It's like three five or minutes four, long. Five yeah. minutes of, <laughs> of chaos. chaos. Of us absolute chaos. Going full always sunny up. Remember, we like each other. Anthony, yeah. was, <laughs> Anthony was really stressed out <laughs> at this time last week. That's a good way to say blaming all his <laughs> friends for their dice juju. Yes. <laughs> Ruining the dice juju. Yes, yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else to. <laughs> Oh, I think they did. Oh, oh, yeah, oh my yeah, god, yeah. I was just so excited about no, the okay. dice video and juice. combats. I wasn't my, thinking. My okay, dice. let's see. Oh. Where were we? Uh, oh. Damn, Rommel is back, Did I say, oh yeah, Apothecary, subscribe to Prime, Rizvan Inc. gave out two community subs, Halljack 10 bits, Ally Slayer 5 bits, Hopeful Optimus, resubscribe. Paul Paul Willsbach, are you subscribed? Jay Brownie did a thousand bits. Thank you Thank all so much. So in the Discord. Ooh. Yeah, come say Discord come chat. What the hell's Bye. going on here? Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Ramo flies. Ramo. Ramo. Enjoy the rollies. Good night, everybody. Woo. See you next week. Yeah. All right, we're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> we're rolling for initiative to roll for our HP for level five. Uh, 15. Oh. 15, aren't you glad I made you re-roll, yes. dummy? Dummy. All right, Me? yeah, go for it. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. That's an eight. Eight, okay. Are using this one? Yeah, go now, for just it. For your, just for your, just for this. Wow. 17? Look at that no look wow. roll, I love it. Okay, go ahead, Marina. Wait, you didn't roll yet, did you? No. 19. What the, oh. what? Okay, please. Jordy, all right, here we go. Three. Yeah! <laughs> okay. so, uh, D, Talon, me, Erica. No, I know. Talon was really low. Oh. Yeah. It's D, D Erica, Erica you, me, Talon, Talon Jor, Jor. Jojo. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. D D you know the drill. So what's your what's your die and what's your mod? D12. And my modifier is constitution? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, a plus, it's a plus one, baby. <laughs> You just roll it. Ooh, don't. Now, the, uh, no. <laughs> that was, I was trying to use the thing. No. Oh. <laughs> um, you can ask the question oh. as you do it. <laughs> can I re-roll for like, because everyone is like, she's an idiot? Do I get to re-roll? <laughs> oh, okay, I'm oh, a dumbass. Can I like, does everybody get to re-roll if they're a dumbass about how they roll? If it's a one, then I'll keep it. You haven't looked at it yet? It's a four. Oh, okay. But if it's a one, I'll keep it. I'll keep it. Can if I re-roll? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a car. So wait, what do you like, what do you have? That was better than sorry. I was, yeah, that was better. <laughs> I'm just trying to. You just rolled your dog. I was reenacting. Oh my god. You just rolled a dog. I was That's your roll. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I would keep it. It was really freaking good. But what I wasn't is going being... on here? Why are you people? Sorry, doing? I just he did it again to do what I was oh, what, what I was trying to do. And I got fucking eleven. It, it was really good. So maybe I'll get a little bit of that now. Who is you, that? You're so tiny. Absolute Who is madness. That? This is so Off the rails. I think it's you next, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, what is the modifier? Constitution. My constitution, my constitution saving. No, wait, no, what is your? That's my constitution. So you add that to yeah. whatever you roll right it's now. The same. Okay. It's not always the same, but not in your same. case right now. I was just trying to get it. The, I was okay, to oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> we're we're over you now. We're on. Hold on, wait. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so what's oh. your what's your con mod? Two. Okay, so three. Five. You had five. Yeah. <laughs> Is that okay? Did I disappoint you, Anthony? <laughs> I'm gonna...
This is, uh, <laughs> this is the most toxic rolling franchise. TC, Thief Rogue, level 5. D8 yes. yes. plus yes. Okay, I'm cooking now. I'm cooking. Okay, here we go. Oh, it just got to go in the tray. It's got to go in the tray. Oh, my God. Thank you for catching it, Anthony. All right, here we go. Not doing it again. Oh, my God. We six fucking three. This is the we We're redoing the whole episode. Episode is out. Night is out. This is over. All right, Jordan. You're up, Jordy. Time to redeem the whole group. Oh, my God. Okay, Jordy, what's your thing? <laughs> D10 plus three. <laughs> Shut the camera person. I'm sorry. God I'm sorry. damn. D10 plus three. Okay. That oh, one. It's a one. Okay, okay. 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 reroll. Re it's one reroll. Oh my God. Uh, if it's a one, you get to reroll, but then you have to take the second roll. Even okay. if it was a one. Even if it was a one. Thank you, Dungeon Master. Balls. Close them. Shut your. Oh. 